And welcome to episode 178, or 77, it's not 79, it's 78 of Nerd Rage Radio, <clears throat> with your host, Bobby Skullface to my right, Chris Pinkerton, if you're nasty, to What's left. up, party people? Did I steal your thing? No, that's all right. I, I've adapted. <laughs> and I'm Adam Russman. You know, we do need to treat Chris well mm. today, because mm-hmm. I feel like he hasn't been here the last couple times, because we, we you know, he was a... <laughs> Did he get in over his head? He was a little sure. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little wet behind the ears, so a little bit. <laughs> you know, Bobby, I, I watched the Bumblebee episode, the, the Bumblebee thing you put up, up on the Skullface channel, and <clears throat> I just shook my head towards the end of it. <laughs> I just had to shake my head. Oh, I missed it. Do tell. I showed it to you, didn't I? Where we did that. Where the Aquaman jokes came in, and I added them to the end of that. No, I didn't oh. see. Added if, if you pause it real quick, I, I can bring it up. No, that's fine. We'll okay. do it later. We'll do yeah. it later. I don't want to. We got a good vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris yeah, is already yeah. agitated, I'm, so I'm, we just continue I'm, on this. I way. do know the vibes. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm gonna start my nerd week today. Absolutely. Get into it. Go for it. This is the 22nd of January. We're recording. It's Tuesday, yes. right? So had a great weekend. Good. Had an extra holiday. Painted my ass. I got in the fucking zone. Oh, that was the day you were busy, right? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean, the day I was busy? Um, for no rage. Well, no. I originally said let's not do it Monday because I had the kids, mm. and you know it was also going to snow or ice or some shit. Yeah. So I was like, let's just plan it. Let's plan it for Tuesday. If you'd have brought those motherfuckers here. They might have kept my kids out of trouble. They ended up in a pickle yesterday. But continue. Oh, actually, I'm glad I didn't come here because I got some work done. So, um. You, There's a, you got a ridiculous amount of paint. Uh, ridi- d- dude, like, blues and purples, <laughs> I've got them locked down, bro. Looks great. I've got them locked down. Um, so, it, you know, I'm, I'm kind of taking your initiative, man. Hmm. You did that Sasquatch the other day, and you're talking about not, not using black lines. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, that's, that's kind of fucking daring. You get used yeah. to one thing, and you want to, like, Scary. go. You want to go outside of the norm. And I've been... I've been messing around with some like quick painting techniques recently. And long story short, I know this isn't beer and bolters 30K, um, but we're going to talk a little little uh, gaming action because I'm looking at a beautiful Speed Freaks high-speed combat in the 44th million box that will be Skull Face reviewed here shortly. I don't know what there is to review. <laughs> like the sprues are still plastic. <laughs> what are you talking about the molds and you know, like how, how well engineered they are? Because you haven't looked at one of these. In a, what happened to your finger? Uh, I, I'll get into it. Okay. Um, the artwork, the style, the aesthetic, all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. The spiky bits. And anyway, so there's a, a Maryland 30K League um, that I, I, uh, somebody else in the group invited me to. And some good, some different guys that are doing 30K stuff specifically. And they started an Escalation League. So like every month you pledge to paint a certain amount of points. And there's rules. Like it's got to be one troop choice, one HQ choice. And then if you can... Um, play a game with somebody else in the league, and like there's like you don't have to win or lose, just like just fulfilling your painting obligations, <clears throat> playing a game with them, playing two games with them, whatever. So another member of, of my club was like, "Hey man, I'm going to do this. Do you want to do it with me? Because I need somebody to play. I don't want to drive all the way down to Glen Burnie to play." I was like, "Yeah man, I'll, I'll do it with you." So once it was like a comp, not so much a competition, but like like there's a goal and you have to make this up. I was like, "Fuck, I can knock that out." So I'm doing like two legions at the same time learning some cool techniques, but I painted some ultramarines, which I've been wanting to do for years, as you know. Mm-hmm. And you've told me for years I should go ahead and do it because mm-hmm. I've been lying to myself not wanting to do it. Kind of like you and quarter scale statues based mm-hmm. off your video. <laughs> so yesterday I finished a 10-man squad. I did two HQ uh, uh, units and a five-man scout squad and a HQ for another legion. This was fucking knocking them out, man. Knocking mm-hmm. them out left and right. It was great. So it's a th- it's 30,000 leagues? 30,000. 30 K is Warhammer 30 K horse heresy. Yes, you know, I'm trying to make a water. Drink. Oh, I'm trying to you mean fit 20, in. you mean 20,000 leagues. No, it's 30,000. It's even deeper. <laughs> 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 That's where SpongeBob <clears throat> lives down there. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. Too soon, man. Too soon. SpongeBob. Um, so painted a lot, uh, watched ET with the kids. Oh, yeah. I don't think I've seen that movie since before puberty. So is this gun or walkie talkie ET? Oh, it was gun. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and you know what? Not for nothing though. Knowing the controversy, the gun bit. It, they might have been better off with the walkie talkies because it's not just the pistols. It's it's right before the whole group of boys flying the bikes. Correct. 
two vehicles come and they come out and they're, they got shotguns. Mm. And like you have a close up of them like kind of racking the shotgun and like the, the kid's like, oh shit. And then they start to fly and then they back off. And so I think they took out the close up of the shotguns and when they fly over, they just took the shotguns out of two of the guys' hands and put radios in them. Not for nothing, the shotguns might be too much. <laughs> they might, they, this, this I'm, I might, they might have been right to, mm-hmm. to take them out. I mean, I'm just, I think that the, the conversation is worth having. You know, I don't think I don't think it's a kill our childhood. It's, it's definitely not a Han shot first thing. I wonder if this happened after the Han shot first thing. <clears throat> it was, and it just overreacts because that was a change in that character. I think we talked about that. Before. Yeah, but I think I, I just think that it's like, you know, even if it's like let's say it's the wrong choice for the department or whatever. Like, I still think like sometimes like it. it Keeping your mistakes. Yeah. No, I hear you. you know, I hear you. I, I do wonder, though. Somebody get us some guns. There's a goddamn alien on the loose. <laughs> <laughs> Shit is funny. It's worth the jokes. Um, I do. It, it is interesting, though, because I think now we're so hyper. And when I say we, I mean collectively. The collective we. We're so hypersensitive to all the bullshit out there that maybe this is like getting ahead of some of the fucking bullshit problems that comes down the pipe. Anyway, so the kids... Of course, this is the normal thing with the kids. We're going to watch a different movie. I'm going to pick it out, and you're going to fucking watch it and enjoy it. No, we don't want to watch it. It looks stupid. Blah, blah, blah. But every time. Loved it. 100% yeah. love it. Every every time. And I'm like, listen. Children, Trust me. Children. Trust me. What has happened every other time I've suggested you watch a movie? We like it. All right, so what do you think is going to happen this time? We like it. Dude, my kids were super against watching E.T. as well. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dude, E.T. looks wild, bro. <laughs> he looks wild. You know what fucks with me? His teeth. His teeth are little. If you think about it, like close your eyes and your mind's eye, try to imagine ET's teeth. I can't. You I can't. You can't. But they're there, and they look fucking crazy. They look crazy. Like, oh man, I didn't realize he had teeth. But of course, I mean, did you want him just to have gums? I don't know. Yeah. You know. I mean, what's that? <clears throat> oh, <laughs> it's fucked up. <laughs> Don't be talking about people's teeth like that. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So the kids liked it. Had some uh, uh, daughter's birthday. Nice and quiet and chill. Um, It's nice every once in a while. Really nice chill around. Nice chill. The only only issue is she had a little friend come and sleep over the house. And this little friend I'm not a fan of. I've I've got one of those in my daughter's life that I, I literally hide in the basement when she's over. And like, so it's it's this thing where in the schools now, you know, like they don't want you to pass out birthday cards unless you invite the whole class. Correct. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I had yeah. got wind of that. So, you know, we don't we're not doing any a special party. Like the, the girls want to come over and they're like, you know, they wanted to bake a cake or yeah, they baked a cake, which was. Questionable, baked the cake the quality cake was questionable. Yeah, trash. Well, I th- my daughter's getting really good at the baking thing, Correct. but like you have three girls, three chefs in the kitchen. Cooks. Yeah, yeah. It's, Too it was, many cooks. And then we're trying to balance out the like the segregation of the, hey. the youths. You know what I mean? Hey, hey. Because you remember like when, nope. when you came over to sleep in my house, my brother would hang out for a certain amount of time. <clears throat> he doesn't know. When there's two white men in the room with shaved heads, you're not allowed to say certain words. Segregation is one of those words. Unfortunately, you know he didn't know. I'm using the proper context. It's <clears throat> fine. Fair but, enough. Fair but enough. you know, and I, and I actually I'd be curious to the other parents out there. With you know, my girls are 12, 10, and eight. So the ten and eight year old want to hang out with her sister and her friend, and um, but at a certain point, you got to be like, all right, you need to leave your sister alone so she can hang out with her friend. And I think like, my, I think my parents are pretty good with that because my brother hung out for a little bit, but then you know. He left mm-hmm. after a while. I don't ever remember having issues with that. I, you know, I, I thought about this a lot um, because because of the, it is awkward. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel bad when Jana has friends over and Selena. Yeah, like, yeah but you got to give them some. You got to give you some do. Time. You yeah. got to give them some time. Well, but, you know, on top of that, have one poor little boy around all the little girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, I, don't I, worry, he'll be thanking you later. Even when we're all together, it's... Yeah, you know. yeah. But I never, I never, I never felt like it was excessive at your house where like people, like, because you're, even Rachel hung out with us a good bit. Kirby never really did. Well, she was a lot younger than yeah, us. Yeah, but like... um, I mean, She's nine years younger than me. It never felt 
but, but it, then again, it might be different for me as a guest than it would be for you as the host, for, for lack of a better term. But yeah. I never felt like they were imposing. I just remember that one time, my, my birthday, which is in March, um, and it snowed. And I, you were just gonna come over for like just me and you hang out, and sleep over. But your dad's like, I'm not driving that. Yeah. Or your grandma? Maybe your dad was working. Your grandma. Yeah, my grandma. Yeah. And so I invited Mike P over. Yeah. <laughs> P- just, dr- just to get me here. To just to drive you over there. <laughs> <clears throat> oh man, that shit was funny. Um, so watched some. Uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine is oh, back on yes. NBC. Have yes, you watched it? Of course. Did you enjoy it? I loved it. I love that. Did show. you notice a change in the politics in that mm. show? Um, not initially. I was super there. Laughing. There's there. It was good. It was good. Like that was a great episode. How the Hitchcock and Scully one. Oh, dude, that was great. Yeah, that was really good. Um, fucking wing sluts, bro. Wing slut. <laughs> he doesn't know. Bobby's. Like, what know. The he doesn't know. He loop. doesn't know. Um, but yeah, the, the first episode there was there was sliding in some politics and going from Fox to going to NBC, you can kind of fill in the gaps of what that revolved around. But I, I thought that was pretty, that was pretty interesting. I didn't catch that at all. Um, they're there. They're there. Uh, also the good place is back. It's tremendous. I think that's probably my favorite show right now. Um, for some, for a show that had a very, what you perceive to be a limited premise of how far they can go with this. I mean, the first time I watched it, she was like, this is an interesting idea, but this is like a mini series. Mm-hmm. They're going to wrap this up. They're going to wrap this up in eight episodes. Mm-hmm. Eight episodes. That's all you can say about this. Correct. They keep on adding stuff to it and it just keeps on widening that world. I'm like, man, these motherfuckers, they got like a fucking seven year plan for this shit. This is going to be some Star Trek next generation level of show. Mm-hmm. Um, and keeping, and keeping me engaged. Great arcs, story arcs. The cast has great chemistry. I highly recommend the, the good place. Um, it's good stuff. And I want to, I had something else go on, but I can't recall. A couple you, good podcasts. Did you work on the game cabinet any this week? I did not. Did, we've been playing the game cabinet like a motherfucker. My wife is now playing the game cabinet. Nice. She's fucking trash at Super Mario <laughs> Brothers, but God bless her soul because she keeps trying. <laughs> <laughs> um, dude, that original Ninja Turtle game on NES, hard, as, fuck fuck. Is hard as shit. Hard as fuck. It is ridiculous. Historically hard. It's ridiculous. I, I, I don't think. I almost want to find a goddamn game genie like app to cheat that motherfucker because it's 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 stupid. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. Um, but a cool thing is there's a lot of game hacks on there. So guys make their own Nintendo games. So you can play Winter Soldier on Nintendo sixty four, and there's some Transformer games that people just make. Oh really? Not Nintendo sixty four. Correction, uh, Nintendo. Mm. Um, like some eight bit, some eight bit stuff. So that's it's pretty it's pretty cool. Um, you can also play like Streets of Rage with all the wrestlers. Oh, nice! Yeah, so they take the WWE shit. I thought you liked that, Chris. Um, <laughs> what's wrong with wrestling, man? No, that I, wasn't a slight. You, he's being sensitive, man. I'm not. I resp- I, I, I've shown nothing but interest in your extra hobbies. <laughs> really? Okay. Man, I feel like I said the wrong thing. Anyway, it's okay. Um, and uh, trying to find a place for my Superman statue. And Joe has completely fucked me up with that. Yeah. Fucked me up in the game. Yeah. I do not think it looks kind of that deep off at all. No, no, no. The only reason I put it in there is because I had a bunch of people there yesterday. Oh, you and, went there, Kirby. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Dick Peters. I don't know people fuck That me indie up. shelf in there looks great. Yeah, that looks good. Any shelf's not bad. Like, um, like it, it, just like Joe said, if if you would have laid those things out and told me where you were going to put them, mm-hmm. I would have been like anywhere but a detail. Oh, okay. <laughs> but like that looks fantastic. It looks purposeful, which I, I didn't think know is... you hadn't seen that. It's been like that for a minute. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no. looks great. Thank you. And I think that's it. Unless I have an alibi and I'll come back uh, to that. But uh, please, who would like to be next? Go for it. Uh, so I was, I was down with the flu and, uh, and the sickness and uh, yeah. And OPP. <laughs> N O P P. Yeah, you know me. <laughs> was that uh that was stupefy? Oh yeah. Yeah. That that guy with the <laughs> the, the weird piercing. Who <laughs> still has, I saw him recently and he still has that strange double prong piercing. Uh so I I've been watching a lot of stuff cuz I man, I hadn't been sick like that in I, I couldn't tell you when. I mean, it was a get up um try to eat something, go back to bed. For two or three hours, get up, lay on the couch, watch TV, go to bed at eight o'clock. It was awful. Wow! I just I don't get sick like that, and it it yeah. drained me. So I, I watched a lot of stuff, read a lot of stuff. 
Um, I, and I'll follow up from, from, I believe, last week. You guys talked about tidying up. Mm-hmm. I watched two episodes of that yeah, and realized I, it doesn't fit into my life. <laughs> I mean... You only you only need three tweets. You don't need the whole. Well, that's tweets. the thing. Yeah, that's the thing. I only need three toys. I don't three tweets. Three, I don't know. Oh, three I'm, tweets. I've been yeah, watching. Three tweets. I want some of those little boxes, bro. The little shelf shoe, boxes. Shoe boxes. They're not shoe boxes. <laughs> They're not shoe boxes. They're like low profile no, I know, I know. boxes. They're like children's shoe boxes. No, Chris. Newborn shoe boxes. No. They're about an inch tall. Flat Maybe Stanley's you know. shoe box. Maybe. Maybe Maybe flat Stanley. Little, um... They're like a box that you could put a book in, and it would be tight against <clears> the book. Like a, tiger? A, uh, like a tiger? Like a tiger. Tight. A tight. A so, uh, sneak peek to uh, Four Dummies that's coming this week uh, that starts with a bit of this. So here we go. I'll turn it around for it's you It's going to be the suit? No, 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 because it's, it's Four Dummies. I own the rights to it. Oh, okay. If it doesn't <laughs> spark you joy, dude. Robert, you need to get rid of it. Yeah, that's right, Robert. You don't find joy in that sweater. You gotta, How about you when she goes to a big, disgusting house, brings over, like, she's like, I brought you some gifts. And it's like, <laughs> shoe boxes. <laughs> Put your stuff in these shoe boxes. Just that was... <laughs> I saw that episode. She didn't bring the shoe boxes as a gift, Robert. <laughs> Look, they didn't have dressers for their kids. She was trying... <laughs> Stop! <laughs> God. <laughs> was was your laugh on a loop? No, no, he got me. He got me when he, he like I had to. I you know it'll go on Patreon, but I had to cut out so much of the impersonation that he was doing of her because it just went on and on and on, and like I was no good. I was trash. Ah, God, man. Well, to directly uh, correlate with that, I ended up watching more episodes of Hoarders than someone should admit to. Um, <laughs> it balance it out. The, fu- the funniest one was there's this this woman had. You, there's always a tragedy with these people that have got them. Yeah. I, I don't remember what her tragedy was, but no, I do remember her son had had uh, made an explosive device in his room and blown his hand off. And she had had to quit her job. Somehow ended up with a, with a million dollar severance. A million dollars. Do you know what she spent it on? What? Teddy bears. Like a million dollars with teddy bears. Teddy bears, like those. Is it Strauss or something like that? There's yeah, yeah, yeah. like super expensive ones. So that wasn't even the main problem. The main I, I'm, problem. I'm confused. On, <laughs> how did she get a? How meanwhile, she get a sell? meanwhile, the son is like, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, I'm sure the money went somewhere. But at this point, the million was gone, yeah. and she was living on her social security check. The house wasn't. The house wasn't. You know, there wasn't dead cats everywhere like some of those. There was just you couldn't walk because there was teddy bears everywhere, right? <laughs> and they brought in a teddy bear. They brought in a teddy bear expert. Oh, did she sell some? Yes, Dude, what school do you have to go to for that fucking certification? <laughs> well, I mean, we could probably be certified experts <clears throat> in things no one else cares about mm. ourselves. But yeah. you know, he was like, "This is this." Isn't this, that what we do here? He picked up one. Well, to, be, to be fair, except for, except we always say we're not experts. Right, that's yeah. the difference. That's what experts say. <laughs> no, no, I, feel like, I feel like this te- humbly. See, I feel like this teddy bear expert is not a, not humble. <laughs> I feel like she has a certificate on he, her wall. He You're assuming humble. that she's a she. First off, oh, that is true. It, it was not a she. Oh yeah. my god, and Dude, I'm terrible. And, and you're assuming that they're not humble. Am I the sexist Spider Man? You are. <laughs> <laughs> so he picked up one. He's like, "Yeah, this this will this will this is five hundred dollars at auction." And her the, the main issue was she thought someone else was hidden in her house and was stealing her expensive teddy bears and replacing them with the junky ones and throwing them everywhere. That was the main issue with this one. Yeah. Wow. Uh, moving on, <laughs> um, I watched a movie called Annihilation. Oh, I want to see that. Good. It's got Natalie. It's 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 actually got. Um, <clears throat> oh, it's a sci-fi movie, but it, it's got, it wasn't where it was well received. Right. right? It's, well, yeah. it's got Padme and it's got um, Poe in it. Oh, oh, really? So you know, well, sign me up. A little prequel sequel action. Yeah, yeah. and they uh, prequel sequel. Yeah. Call it. The experts call freak. it. That's what the experts call They're it. Lovers. <laughs> so it's even weirder. I actually didn't even register that till I got in watching it. It's. I really enjoyed the movie. Um, it's a little haunting. It kind of sticks with you a little bit. Yeah. But I enjoyed that. That was good. I want to check it out. I started watching a show on Netflix. I think it's new. It's called Trigger Warning with Killer Mike. I saw the trailer for it. Oh, my God. It is wild. Is it? Yeah. Like, the first episode is he spins... It looks hauntingly predictable from the trailer. It probably is 
Yeah. Okay. Like the first, the, he, he's in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. So the first episode is he is trying to live three days only using products that um, are from black owned companies. Okay. And that means he went to a barbecue restaurant owned by black people, but they couldn't tell him that the meat came from a black farm. So he didn't eat there. Yikes. So that would make life challenging. It was very challenging. He rode a bicycle. Killer Mike on a bicycle is what, so, a funny premise. What's the point of this? Just it's basically just pushing stereotypes. So they made <laughs> he made vo- vocational pornography. Okay. To try to get people, he's like, "What's the most viewed thing on the internet? Pornography." So he's trying to get he, he interviewed a bunch of children and I want to be president. I want to be this. Then he interviewed a bunch of adults and the guy's like, "I want to be in the music industry. I want to flip houses." So he was basically trying to find a way to get vocational training out to people, and they filmed how to change a doorknob, and it was and then two guys had sex while they were changing the doorknob. <laughs> wow! Yeah, it was wild. And then there, <laughs> there's another one where they dude uh, don't get sick again. <clears throat> the, yeah, no, <laughs> the Bloods and the Crips. Um, uh, now this might be interesting. Well, the point was that the Hell's Angels have basically marketed themselves. And you could buy a Hell's Angels t shirt yeah, on Amazon. Yeah, correct. So why can't the Bloods and Crips do that? Seems legit. Yep, yeah, I'm on board. So they uh, <laughs> they started soda companies. It was, um, what was it? The names of them? Crip Cola. And um, I don't remember the name of Blood them. Oranges. Blood Juice. Blood yeah. Oranges. It's but they, easy. They went to farmers markets and sold them. Um, had a lot of pushback, but. Uh, obviously so. Oh, oh, they did it. They did a focus group, and then all the Crips <clears throat> come in the room and talk to the focus people. That's interesting. And like Killer Killer Mike calls this one guy out for like being super racist. Uh-huh. He, a Puerto Rican guy. He's like, "You're the, you're more racist. You're the only other person of color in here. And you're more racist than everybody in here." <laughs> it, was, it was entertaining. So, are the Bloods and the Crips still beefing? That's still a thing. So it depends. So there's much more of that. In California, mm-hmm. whereas like the Blood and Crip East Coast culture mm-hmm. is not at odds at all. Mm. Yeah, it's more it's more. I mean, mellow. I would suppose. I don't mm. think they've got beef like they yeah. used to. An alibi, real quick. I started watching the Ballad of Buster Scruggs. The Ballad of Buster Scruggs is phenomenal. I've seen it twice. Yeah, it's That's a watching motherfucker right there. Man. <laughs> he is. I'm glad that he's here. <laughs> the podcast would be thirty five minutes. How far did you get through? I'm on the second story. You are the watcher of the Nerd Rage universe. Watch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. And Jay's uh, verse. Dun, 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 dun. Yes, it's pretty good this far. Yeah, I, I well, I watched it, and then I was telling my wife about it, and she, I didn't actively watch it the second time. But hmm. dude, there's there's a story <laughs> in there. Don't ruin it for me. I, I'm not. But there's up. one in there that's like, oh my god, it is so fucked up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So fucked up, and some of the actors that there's a lot of actors in there you wouldn't expect to be in there. What is it? The, what a Buster Douglas? The bat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, we'll, well, I think we're getting into this later, but the song that he sings in the first one, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, nominated for an um, Oscar. Is it really? Yeah, yeah it's legit. it seems legit. Um, finished Punisher season two. Okay, Power Watch that this weekend. Out of ten. Hmm. Well, seven, that was a six. Seven, that was no. a six. six. That was seven, six. seven and a half. <laughs> that was a six. And what would um, what would you put the first one at? Probably eight and a half. Okay. Yeah. So just one step down. Hmm. Yeah, one. it told some good stories, some interesting ways to get there. There was a lot of, a lot of things I think we got told that didn't need to be told. Was it more fantastic than the first episode, the first season? Not at all. Okay. No, I, it, there was. The only thing I'd say that was fantastic about it is, you know, sometimes getting hit in the head with a big metal object is going to put you down no matter who you are. Yes. And that's really the, the kind of stuff like that. I'm like, really? How many brake rotors can you get hit in the head with? Mm-hmm. You know, that kind of shit. And that's not just not just the title character, just everybody, people in general. <clears throat> um, maybe maybe adrenaline, you know, no. makes you impervious. No. Um, let's see. Impervious? <laughs> Fire Fraud. So I've watched Fire. So the did, Netflix one. Let's just do this. Did okay. you watch Netflix? Yes, I watched the Netflix one. You I, watched both. I watched them both. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. I heard the slacker. I heard. I don't have Hulu. I heard the Hulu one was better. It's different. It is more about the Hulu one is more about um, Billy as a 
Billy. Running after Billy. <laughs> Notorious action for you on a Tuesday. Oh, Jesus, that's that's <laughs> digging in the crates for sure. It's more about him as a millennial and some of the things he did. They like go more into the magnesium card, the magnesium and card, and you know, like basically. Let me say this real quick yeah. for the listeners: the Fire Festival was a festival that was happening in 2018, in the midst of all these festivals that are happening every fucking month now. And uh, it was organized by a guy named J- Billy McFarlane and Ja Rule. And unfortunately, Ja Rule, is he just can't win for losing this poor fucking guy. But they organized a festival. They poorly planned it. It could have been something, but they didn't have any idea what they were doing. And from the footage, it doesn't look like they were taking it that serious. No, um, they, they were. No. And as a result, it ended up being a fucking disaster. There was a viral picture that went out that really tore it down, Jeez, which I remember you. seeing. Me too, yeah. Um, which was, uh, they give you your, your meal, and it was a piece of cheese on a piece of toast. <laughs> With like one <laughs> slice of tomato on one. <laughs> and like somebody took a picture of it and it was like fire. And then like the fire fraud Instagram account went up and all this shit, like they tore it to pieces. Yeah. Um, the feds are looking into it or mm-hmm. looked into it. Well, and yeah, <clears throat> yeah, well, so it goes, so the magnesium card was this, basically it was a, a VIP card for New York City. Uh, they it had was like metal. It was metal. Yeah, they had they had a loft. Was it made out of magnesium? <laughs> that I don't know. No, and mag- magnesium was spelled wrong. Actually, yes. That's so true they too. actually interviewed Billy in the Hulu one. He's in that. Mm-hmm. Did they run after him? No, they don't. Not okay. at all. But he he is in that one, and uh, and they interview him. So that's something that's different from the Netflix version. But it goes more into like you know, basically, he was saying that they'd have these tickets, kind of like what happened at the end. But hey, uh, magnesium members, you know, you get your tickets for Hamilton or whatever. Mm-hmm. And yes, th- he would basically have to. <clears throat> the he would have money out and then use one hustle to pay for the next. So he was he Rob was, Peter to pay Paul. He was generating. The, it was like a pyramid scheme. Yeah, but it. it he, I don't think he was making it was a pentagram. He was scheme. making money. He was really good at going to uh, to uh, ran venture. by the devil. Very good at going to venture <laughs> capitalists and getting money. Yeah. I mean, over and over and over and over again. Uh, I think the wildest thing that was said in the whole bit was the guy that was going to suck a dick to get water. That's true. <clears throat> no. Nope, this is legit. So this this gay guy oh, okay. was um, I get kind of been a supporter of the whole thing. And probably, and probably the smartest person out of all. 100%. He was the only one with a, a real business sense of it in its totality. There were other people that had it. That yeah. they, they didn't utilize. Mm-hmm. And like whenever they try to say, look, there's a problem, they just fire them. You know, like instead of saying, like, okay, fix it or let's find a way to fix it, they fire them. Okay. So this this one guy, they were trying to get a water, wa- it was a tanker or it was a water tanker? No, it was it was a uh, a truck full of Evian wa- bottled oh, water. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So it was a truck carrying cases of Avion into this fucking place. Mm-hmm. And due to some import tax, they they weren't gonna let it in or something, but it was a gay guy down there or something. Or he, the guy said, so basically it was like the minister of tax or whatever. Yeah, this is in like the Bahamas on some yeah, yeah, single yeah. island. <clears throat> basically, Billy said Billy called me and said I need you to use your your gay charm and uh, go give this guy a blowjob so we can have the water for the festival. So this guy gave somebody you a blowjob. No, he was going to though. But the guy basically just said, as long as you pay, we're the first people you pay. Yeah, we're good to go. But um, but he went down there with the intention of getting it done. Yeah, mm. you know, and he was like, it was the lowest I was willing to like. It was the lowest point of my life. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> crazy. So the, one interesting thing to take away from this: the one that was on Netflix was actually produced by, by the Fuck Jerry by people. Fuck Jerry, who are the people who helped them. Pro- they hired them as a promotions company to Correct. run the show. So they were the ones that did the Instagram, the Orange Square, Correct. all of that. And they come out smelling like roses. Yeah. And uh, but the one that is on... Uh, Hulu. Hulu. Is independent? I don't know who produced it, but the guy from... There was a guy f- that worked for Fuck Jerry that is not in the Netflix one at all because they fired him. Mm-hmm. And he claims he was the point man for the whole thing for Fuck Jerry to the fire company. And the whole thing is the festival was to launch this app to book music acts. Yeah. Which is actually pretty genius. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't want Raekwon at their birthday party? Right? Yeah. And they had, um, <clears throat> they had uh, the, this one scene that, that, that was telling. It's like in the, you know, it's not the same way, but if, 
if you save as the first act of this documentary, yeah. they're trying to get Billy to sign off on something or get in his opinion on something, and like the camera pans down, he's passed out drunk on the beach. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> it's like in the morning. <laughs> so they filmed, they filmed a very glossy, very high-end sizzle reel, basically, for this. So they brought all these top models um, in and basically had a beach party. And the one of the guy, and I don't remember which documentary this was on, but the guy that was like in charge of producing that, he said, "They told me this was just going to be them partying for uh, two days, and I had to cobble something together." And that was the only footage they ever showed. They never showed like, "Here's where you're going to be staying," because it was FEMA tents. <laughs> they had FEMA tents from some hurricane yeah. left over. And then and that, it was a disaster. And, and, but like, the worst part about it is, I mean, and they had they had about half the tents set up that they needed, and they had supposedly rented all these. Oh, they had rented all these these uh, Airbnbs or, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to house all these different people. Right on the Hulu one, Billy says the reason that nobody got to use those rental properties is that he had all the keys in a box and he lost the box. <laughs> Dude, I mean, it, it's such it is a, a disaster. So, so what happened to the money? Is all spent? Yeah, I don't even know if they made a... a they didn't make any. Yeah, so, didn't make no, any and it was, it was like... I think the cheapest ticket was like five grand to go to this thing. Wow. And yeah. shout out to Blink-182. They got out of that. They got out, they, they saw the bullet coming and dodged the fuck out of so it. They were what like acts the, played? No, so, nobody. <clears throat> nobody ended up playing good music. The entire good music was booked. So Which is kind of vague. So I would guess that Kanye's not showing up, but... Big Sean, Push, uh, who else is signed to good music? I don't know. I mean, like, 2 Chainz is Tiana Taylor. 2 Chainz is not, although he is very heavily affiliated. So with. they're headlining. Blink-182 is headlining. Ma- Major Laser, which I'm not real familiar with them, but it's like a, a techno. Yes, they're like a light and sound DJ show. <clears throat> so Blink-182 was like, put out on like their social media they're like look we don't think that this is going to be a good venue but we can't pre- deliver the performance we can't we deliver the performance that we want and that you deserve so we're getting out of this and um how close was this to the show i think a week no it was a day that people were <sighs> in transit so they promised you know your airfare was you know basically it looked like you were coming in on prop planes to this private island um they had them shoved in some the like the it, it looked like, like t- the, the, mo- t- the most seats you could put in a commercial airliner. <laughs> that's what it looked like. And like it wasn't a real pilot. Like the pilot. Oh, like, oh on the way back? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was <clears> a mess. So, I mean, it's a shit It's show. It's well worth I, I think it's silly to say this is worth three hours of your time, but if you have access to both platforms, it's well worth watching. I would love to watch the second one. It's well worth watching both of them. Good grief. And nobody's been arrested. Right? Oh, no, oh, Billy's, yeah. Billy's doing Billy's, time. Billy's doing time. Right oh, now. really? Yeah. How much? Six know. years for federal fr- for fraud. Mm, it, well, no, he got busted on um, wire fraud because because he had in, he had inflated a bunch of uh, numbers for investments. Okay, um, it, it's very complicated, but it, it does so it does a good job he, explaining it. Fucked over the rich people. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, what's funny when he he was on house arrest, people started getting emails from NYC VIP things like <laughs> Grammy tickets and. <laughs> Um, what's that thing that Anna, Anna Winter puts on that big gala? Oh, yeah, yeah. You Fashion. can't. You, that's invite only. You, there's no tickets to that. Or front row at this and this. And the, it was Billy. Mm. Billy had hired this guy as a front man, and while he's on parole, they're running this scheme to get money. Like what the hell? It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Nuts. Mm. But the guy. I mean, I guarantee you. And they say this in one of the documentaries. That guy will pop back up in ten years doing something. Yeah. Um, let me see what else I got here. I read uh, I read The Long Halloween for the first time. Oh. Mm-hmm. oh wow, wow, we were. Yep. Very good. I enjoyed it. Nice. It very good. I didn't realize that was that long of a story. It's like 13. It's not called The Short Halloween. I know, but it's like, it's literally like a year's worth of, I mean, it's coming out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, back in the day. So it's in that giant, uh, that giant book that uh, Raul got me. Um, there was something I... Did I let you borrow that one too? No, you didn't. I, I, seriously, I, you didn't let me borrow that one. Hmm. So I've always Same said if, if I had the means and I found it and a place to put it, uh, there's, a, there's a pinball machine I've always wanted to buy. It's a Williams Cyclone pinball machine. Um, the, the, the back has a roller coaster and the Reagans are on it. I don't know if 
you guys play pinball much. I, and the reason that I, I have fond memories of this is the comic book shop I went to as a child called The Tattooed Lady um, had this pinball machine. I like her already. Yeah. It was comic books and skateboards in the 80s. And I, I probably put $100 in that over several summers, but uh, there was one for sale in a Frederick Marketplace group recently, $1,900. But I don't, I don't even wow. know. I don't know if that's a fair number. Yeah. Uh, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't get it. You didn't get it? No. Oh. no I thought of it. It's, it you it, should get it. I know. I know. You should get it. I don't know if that's a good price. I've never priced out. I know they're expensive. There is a pinball machine what? like uh, place in Frederick, so you might be able to reach out them and uh, reach out to them and ask them if that's a good price. Could be. Um, I forget what it's called. <laughs> yeah, know, paddles or something. Paddles. I think it's called something like paddles. I don't know. So, I had I had a conversation. <laughs> I had a conversation with a friend this week who was out of town in Texas at his grand father's funeral and this this topic came up and i thought it would be an interesting conversation piece real quick so in in this case because this happened to me as well um his grandmother had died 20 years ago okay his grandfather who just passed away got remarried within a year he got married he got buried next to his first wife Mm -hmm. i i had my grandmother lived longer than my grandfather and she got married it was a much shorter time than that same thing but think about 20 you're with somebody 20 years and you know at at the end which yeah look and dust in the wind and all that but 20 years and you're you're gonna get buried next to your first wife how long was he married to the first wife I would imagine it was at least that long, if not longer. Uh, it, it would have been longer. Can you get the plot next to it? You know what I mean? That'd be my I, first. I that'd be my. A first. lot of people do that. I, I, I'm <clears throat> familiar with that. Sandwich them in. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I just but thinking about that, saying it out loud, it's just it's almost bizarre, you know. Yeah, cremate me, Mac. Yeah, that's what I'm getting done. Yeah, throw me in the throw me in the air. So that's uh, we got a bunch of toys, <laughs> built built some cool stuff. So that's about it. Nice. Uh, I watched uh, the fire documentary as well. I watched the first four episodes of Punisher. Um, I think so far. I think it's out of ten. Out of ten so far, I would give it a seven. Okay. Um, the first three episodes are really good, and then the fourth episode is kind of a drag. And then I'll tell you a little bit of spoilers, light spoilers. You see Jigsaw's face, and is it everything you hope it to be? No. Oh, no, it's no, uh, it's fine. He's fine. Just like I'm like, dude, go back to work. It's a bad what are you, day, what are you bad, bitching about? Bad day shaving. <laughs> like, really? I mean, it's not a bad day shaving. But I mean, he was fucked up. <clears throat> yes, but it's like a. He's got like one. I would say like his most significant scar is on his forehead. And it's like right here. Yeah. It just looks like he like he could have taken a tumble down the steps, and like you know you're not you're not flawless anymore. Yeah. But, you know, it, I mean, he was super pretty before. But it's but it's like it's like. You pulling up a picture? It's it's this type of deal. It's it's like every scar has its story type of scar. Do you know what I mean? It's not like a, a like chick stick scars type of scar. It's not like it's like 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 his face should look like it was fucking chewed up and spit back out. Oh on yeah, his, you yeah, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't it's not like that at all. That's that's disappointing. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is worse than I thought it was going to be. But this is this is not bad day shaving. Well, compared to hang on, the last time we saw Jigsaw. Yeah. Uh, in Bobby's favorite movie of all time, um, <clears throat> McNulty as as Jigsaw when he fell in the recycling vat during Punisher. Um, nice I'm, I'm sure there was a cartwheel and a, a assault rifle involved. Yeah, yeah I kind of like this Jigsaw better. I do too. Yeah, it's. I mean, this this Netflix one is. It's just. It's just not Jigsaw. It's mm-hmm. just a, the guy. Oh, here's who, even better picture. Yeah, that's not bad. You can you can still see who it is. A guy who got in a fight, yeah, know, and lost. Yeah, not a guy who had his face smeared into a mirror for. Yeah, he looks like the other guy. Like yeah. when you say you should see the other guy, like that looks like the other guy, but it's not like it's uh-huh. not how it should be. It's not somebody who should be going through psychological trauma due yeah. to the way he now looks. It's a bad. It's a bad car accident. Yeah. Okay. I mean, no, it's a. It's it's not a good car accident. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um. So I mean, he looks like a candidate for some future plastic surgery. Might be able to work that out. <clears throat> yeah, I mean easily. Mm-hmm. Or like, you know, it's just like if I if I if I if I my face ended up looking like that, I'd be like, oh, just keep it moving. <laughs> just go ahead. Like, yeah. like, you know, like don't say that. 
Yeah, like I, that's not a big deal. Like that's you know that's like a I'm a man. I'm yeah, a that's a, that's a that's a you lived a rough life scar. That's not a fucking <clears throat> like yeah. you're never the same scar. Don't minimize this trauma. I, you dude it's so funny. When I have my appendix taken out, right? Like I can be funny about open wounds, right? Like 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 so I'm all bandaged up now, right? I burned my finger uh, working on a diorama, and then I cut a piece of my knuckle off of this finger <laughs> working, on, working on a diorama. I have, it, I have this one splinted because it's on my keep knuckle. On, keep on popping it. And But, like, I'm funny about this shit. Like, I take it off, clean it, wrap it back up. Mm. I, I don't – I mean, I, I'm up to date with all my shots and all that kind of shit, but still. Let it breathe. It, well, so I, I let, I'm at a point where I'm letting this one breathe at night. Mm. Long story short, when I had my appendix taken out, I kept I kept the bandage on until until I felt like it was healed. Like there was just no need to take it off. It was super well dressed. It was clean. It was you know like no, no need to fuck with it. And I'll never forget my wife. We were laying in bed, and she was like, "Are you going to take it off tonight?" And I was like, "No, nah, maybe tomorrow. I'll, I'll see how it feels." And she was like, "Okay, the first step is being able to look at it." And I was like. <laughs> pause on the dvd player <laughs> look my biggest complaint with this scar that's going to be left on my abdomen is that it looks like some bitch shit my biggest complaint is that it's not going to be wicked and gnarly okay how big is the scar on your, your appendix um it's like this Oh really? Yeah, because it's all microscopic. Yeah. Like I'm not, not microscopic, My, microthopic. Micro, there's some word for it. Like they go in with the fucking things and they cut it out, and it's no big deal. Mylopic. I can't think of them. <laughs> Where's Joe? It's, Joe's probably going nuts right it's now. It's laser yeah. surgery. Yeah, but you know they go in and make a small. It's like three small incisions mm-hmm. that they make, and yeah. they're like they're almost like pinholes. Yeah, I've oh, got them. Right? I've got my knees have those guys. Yeah, you just they go in. Yeah. They they sort. I've never of, heard anybody getting all that kind of crazy about a scar type of thing like which you know well like some people do like some people really? yeah 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 like Ortho, i mean jigs- orthoscopic orthoscopic there it is. yeah um you know that's part supposed to be part of jigsaw psyche is like the scar trauma mm-hmm. but like i was like look don't ever think for a minute that i'm upset like i'm i'm only upset that it's not going to look fucked up <laughs> like that's that would give it character my stepfather had this huge fucking one, like from back in the day when, like, they did surgery with like a hacksaw. Like, he had this huge fucking one. Like, like you know, it looked like um, I mean, it looked like somebody took, took a katana sword to his fucking side. Like, I was like, give me that thing, you know? Like, that thing's fucking badass. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, I'm trying to think what else we did. Um, I watched uh, something else. I I, oh, I started watching G1 again. Uh, to get ideas for this okay. diorama stuff, I was like, "Say why?" And um, and then I worked on this diorama, and like, I do feel like for, I, I've realized two things from this: one, they need to be realistic environments. <coughs> two, Agreed. Two, whatever realistic environment that is needs to show their sense of scale. Mm-hmm. It is paramount to making them look impressive, and. I know that I got to light those shelves now. Mm. I got to light the shelves. I need a permanent light fixture on everything. Like that means that's going to mean tearing it all out, lighting it all, putting it all back. Like, and you know, if I could have it, you know, from my phone or whatever, perfect. If not, that's cool too. I'll bend over and flip the switch, so mm-hmm. to speak. But like, <clears throat> it needs to be done. Um, so I did this one. I'm proud of it. I'm happy with it. It's not perfect. I can, you know, I nitpick my shit until the, the end of the day I anyway. It's probably good on a cloudy day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like the the the, the Blue sky, and I think that what my, actually the sky <laughs> is the, the sky itself is fucking money. The clouds are not money, but they're fine. And I think once I put this exit sign in, it's gonna, you know, be even less obvious. Um, so I'm feeling optimistic. I sent it uh, to a few folks. It's not done yet. <clears throat> Excuse me. God damn. But um. You know, I sent it to Jisk, and Jisk was like, he had some criticisms as well, which I agreed with his criticisms. But um, but his exact verbiage is how I felt, which is you cracked the code. Like, you figured out what it was that makes it look right. Mm-hmm. It, now it's just a matter of getting that right. Mm-hmm. But You don't want to get <clears throat> too hyper-realistic because then it'll pull them out, but you don't want it to be too cartoony that it looks childish. you got to find out that medium. Well, you got to put them in realistic environments. Yes. So, yeah, yeah. A place yeah. that could look real. 
yes. n- not like the like the arc get it out of here the nemesis get it out of here like all that shit like it's got to be grounded somehow well i mean i mentioned to you earlier i think the only problem you're going to run into that is stuff that has to be in space or, or cybertron correct. or correct I mean, Quint- quintessa yeah um yeah but if you haven't if you have enough that look realistic you might be able to slide that other one in without it mm-hmm. pulling you out mm-hmm. that's a good point and even and even that one you know, it's not all this monotone purple or this monotone orange or yellow or whatever. Like, so I'm feeling optimistic about it. Again, I feel like there's hope for it. Uh, so I'm in a better place with all that stuff. And I think that's pretty much it. Sit down Saturday and went well. And yeah, I like that last episode um, <clears throat> you did with the. Uh, Do we hate what we can't afford? Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was a uh, it was a lot of research in that one. You know, I was hoping to draw in because you had talked about that podcast you were listening to or whatever. They talked about it a bit with like the ninjutsu versus the Brazilian hakido or whatever. The guy that thinks he's the greatest Brazilian hakido and meets you know that whole conversation. Yeah, it might have been a Joe Rogan podcast. I can't. I remember <clears> talking <throat> about it, but I can't remember what it was. I'm trying to tie another source into it, but I, I'd come across that article, and, and even though that article was not about the same thing, I felt well, like a lot of it we, applied. We talked a little bit about that a couple. I want to say like, like a month or two ago. Mm-hmm. So that was that was a good that was a good circle round. Because I, I, I think there's there's some serious truth to that. Yeah, yeah. Well, what I thought was most interesting that one part was about thinking about how, like, if 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 I'm locked in these, like Chris and I were talking about earlier, if you're locked in this, not locked, but you're in this Facebook group, and like I'm in some of these quarter stay up scale, uh, one six Facebook groups. Uh, one is like display your stuff or whatever, and like you see these people's basements, and it's like it's it's more than my house, you know? Yeah. But because we're in the same Facebook group, it does feel like this person is supposed to be my peer, you know, but we're not. He's in a completely different financial status, like socioeconomic status than I'm in. Have you ever seen that one guy's like statue house, like all glass? There's a video. Yeah, where like the, the walls are glass. The like whole, you can the see whole outside. structure's glass and he's got about a thousand. Oh, you should answer that. Should it's going to be, it's going to be a machine. That's all right. Do you need affordable health insurance from an A-plus rated insurer at a price that you and your family can afford? Yeah, why not? Every A-plus rated health insurance. Eat my ass. (laughs) (laughs) Um, The, uh, but like, so, so, but, but but like, you know, you see these people and you feel like, fuck, man, my shit's not up to snuff. Mm -hmm. And like you start, not, not, not not that I hate on it, but I I start getting, I start feeling away in the sense of comparing what I have to that, right? Mm -hmm. Like I start making this comparison in my head. But it's only because we're interacting in the same space. If I'm if I'm thinking about someone that has it all, like which is why I brought up Jay Z or Hove, like that guy's got more money than I'll ever see in my lifetime. But I don't hate on it at all. I'm like, yeah, get, get it, get mm-hmm. some more, yeah. <laughs> you know. But I, I don't see us on the same level. It's only when you start seeing yourself on the same level that you start feeling like you're in competition. And sometimes you're not in competition. Well, they're in a, they're in a completely different bracket, right? I mean, we're none of us are in competition uh, for, from that. It's <clears throat> right, but, but mentally, you know, like yeah. you and I were talking through the internet, we have daily interactions with people in different socioeconomic brackets, Correct. up up and down, that we would normally just not have any any contact with correct so it gives i think everybody up and down that spectrum has such a skewed perspective or can have such a skewed perspective i heard an interesting quote the other day from somebody and it said every time my best friend every time my best friend succeeds in something i die inside a little bit jesus i know but he's saying like that's how people are Mm. (laughs) you know it wasn't it wasn't literally like he feels that way but he's like that's how people act when they see people there's a there's like a, a sting of jealousy in them and I'm like, that's the shit that robs you of fucking joy. Of joy, like that, that does not spark joy. <laughs> um, but it, it's it's interesting, man. Like, um, and we were talking about we were talking about like, you know, like so. One of my resolutions here recently, and I, I think we talked about last. Did they talk about last episode. He won't think we want to talk about it. We haven't talked about it. Oh, we, when we talked about resolutions, we were meant to talk about how we're maintaining yes, and living up to yes. those. So. We can have that now. Yeah. So, like, one one I've been doing is like the yoga thing, mm-hmm. and and actually, I I thank Laura because we were at we were at your birthday party, mm-hmm. and Laura said something about, hey, you, let's do three hundred sixty five yoga with uh, to Pam, mm-hmm. and I was like, what's that? Say like, just doing yoga every day. He's like really every day. He's like twenty minutes a day. That's it. Twenty. Can you make a twenty minute commitment? 
And I was like, I, was like, I could probably do that. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's bugged me because you know, my wife's a fucking yoga teacher. I wanted, I've been wanting to do it, and I've never done it. I pay some fucking stranger money to work out with. It's just stupid. Mm-hmm. When I've paid for my wife to learn how to, <laughs> right, right, right. people to pay her right, to right, work right. out. So 22 days in, done it every, well, 21 days. I haven't done it today yet, but done it every day. And, dude, I've, like, I've, I've noticed some, like, like, Nothing like physical. I mean, I'm like I'm not losing weight or anything like that. Right. But it just feels good, like this to stop. Like, hey man, I'm gonna fucking just take the time for myself, mm-hmm. and fucking relax, as, you know. And I, and my back, which has been bothering me a little bit more a lot of painting. Big scar, big scar on my back, big gnarly Wicked scar, fucking badass scar. <laughs> <clears throat> um, yeah, it's been good. It's been good. So fucking Hell's Angels used to make out when fucking journalists came around. You know about that? No, what? <clears throat> I meant to bring that up. The way that the Hell's Angels used to turn uh, off journalists that would show up to try to get stories on them was as soon as they would show up, the Hell's Angels would start making out with each other. Really? Yep. Right, with the dudes that make out with dudes? Yep. Huh. Yep. The, the, the dude, who's the dude that's on the fucking, that did the art for like the, like Gonzo, Bonzo, some yeah. shit like that, like that dude. They did a movie about him and everything. Okay. Um, he was like one of the first journalists to infiltrate the um, the Hell's Angels. Hmm. Cause when he showed up, they like went at it, and he was like, "That's cool, bro. Woo, get her done." <laughs> Where do I fit in this party? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like so, like it, it kind of like it blew the doors open to them. Hmm. Interesting. Um, how are your New resolutions? That's so. My New Year's resolutions were: I don't know, I don't care, and being able to say I don't know and I don't care comfortably. And then thirdly was to not react to any time I feel like reacting to take a minute and digest the information. <laughs> And then choose how to react. <clears throat> um, I've gotten, I've, I've been using I don't know fairly well. I've been taking a minute before I react extremely well. I'm batting a thousand so far, and I've gotten I've had some close calls. I don't care. I've been not doing as well with, but it's still at the forefront of my mind. It's just sometimes I don't want to hurt people's feelings. I think. You know, sometimes like I get involved in conversations and I get committed to the conversation and then I'm like, man, I can't tell this person I don't give a fuck about it now because they've invested energy into this and they want to share this with me. Yeah. And now I don't want to tell them I don't care. Yeah, Um, that's really hard uh, to do. A buddy of mine's like heavy into kayaking, right? And he's like always like looking on Google Earths, like, uh, well, just one Earth to be fair, not DC Universe, but he's like trying to find a place to put in to go. And he's had some wild ass story, store, stories, some stories, um, <laughs> delicious. I see you try one. <laughs> but he's had some wild ass stories where like he ended up at this fort and it's like, I'll always call it, I always call it Fort Amistad, but it's not, it just sounds like that. Okay. Um, and he, he went there and this dude like came up to him and was like, what's up, man? And he was like, nothing, you know, just, Make him my way around. And they were like, yeah, you Dave? And he's like, no, no, no dude, I'm, I'm this guy. And I'm like, oh, that's cool, man. And he's like, all right. So he kept walking. And then like he noticed the guy that came up to him, like went to go talk to some other guys and like all this shit. And he's like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Like, this is sketchy as fuck. So he got back in his boat and <laughs> tailed it out of there. Anyway, he came back to like, um, to, look at, know this is to look it up on the internet. It, it turns out it's, it's this weird place that's like it's in Baltimore City, but it's technically Baltimore County property. So like nobody polices it. Right? And yikes. It's become this like uh gay hangout spot. Okay. Uh, I would imagine mostly married men and stuff like that. And in there's like kayaks. there's in kayakers. <laughs> There's this whole culture to it. Like, if you back into a parking spot, like, mm-hmm. you're here for this. If you yep. pull in, you're here for that. Because there's guys that, like, fish down on the docks, and they're like, they know what goes on, but they're like, no, nah, it's not my scene. I, I pull in, you know, like, or, or, or whatever. Like, it's a whole culture down there. But anyway, my guy went there, and people thought he was somebody else that was, like, supposed to be there for that reason. And he, they were basically, you know, seeing if they, if they had found their guy, and they, they, they hadn't found him, but... You know, how, how did he park the kayak? Uh, that, that I don't know. Sideways. <laughs> that I don't know. Sideways. <clears throat> oh, you don't want to park it sideways. Coming in wide, boys. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it's crazy, right? So so 
but anyway, like he, he's always looking on Google and he's like talking, he finds these islands, there's this one island. Like, it, 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 and at first I'm interested and I, and I, I'm, I'm conscious that I'm, I'm the guy that's like, here, check out this trailer, check out this such and such. Mm-hmm. And some people may not give a shit, but yeah. you know, good pro quo. Correct. So like, I, I try to always give that. Right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, some, some stuff ends up being interesting. Like there's this one Island that's out there. You're like not allowed foot on, like you can be arrested if you show up on really? it. Yeah. And like, it was, it was bombed. It was used. It was bombed during the World War II era, but it's technically owned by um, Dupont, the, the Proving Grounds, well, Aberdeen. Aberdeen. It's technically owned by Aberdeen, um, and if you look at it on Google Maps, there's like holes all in it. From hey, where hang they, on, well, I'm sorry. What is Aberdeen? It's like a military base slash uh, military school slash okay. like I got you. Um, and they they've bombed the shit out of it over years, yeah. and in so like you know he's telling me this shit is fucking interesting, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. you know like and um. And then I, I get to, but I get the, then there's a, there's a point out there <laughs> when the shackles, when the rules start feeling like shackles, where I'm like, man, okay, I don't care anymore, you know. Like I, I I've appreciated our moment, but I'm at a point now where I don't care. Um, like you know, just talk about sea glass from the 1400s or some shit. I'm like, look, I'm I don't give a fuck anymore. I'm out in the sea glass and the fucking I don't give a fuck. Um, <clears throat> but so like I, I'm I'm act trying. I want my interactions to be authentic and genuine. But I also want to start learning how to, you know, conserve my time and all that kind of stuff. Too, so. Another one of my resolutions is uh, no porn. Why? Why not? Well, no, I, yeah, I, I, like. But I mean, what 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 led you down this path? Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I just like. I was like, huh. I wonder if I could stop watching porn. Just like the question. Like, so, sometimes it's it's just like <clears throat> a a question of willpower. Okay. So just like, you know, I mean, I'm not a I'm not a porn addict. Like I I hear people talk about porn sometimes like, wow, do you really right. you really into porn? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> like you might want to get that checked out. Mm-hmm. Like how many porn accounts you got? I've never paid somebody for right, fucking right, porn. Right, right, right. And you've got four or five accounts. Well, I paid the stores back in the day. No, bro. I, I wanted an H D. I hear you. It's pretty easy to get without paying for it. You know what I mean? No, man, I need to I need the whole scene. <laughs> I, I guess. <laughs> I guess. I want to know how it plays out. I, mean, I want to see who the cinematographer was for that thing. <laughs> I mean, who watches more than three minutes of porn at a time? <clears throat> um, so with the uh, with the abstinence of porn comes the abstinence of masturbation. Masturbation. Mm-hmm. I haven't done that all month. And so that's that's interesting. And just like, I mean, I'm not saying this is the longest time I've gone without it because sometimes, like, you know, you're busy and whatnot, you know. But like, I, t- I talk to some folks who are like, yeah, twice a day. Jerk off twice a day, man. That's a lot of jerking off. So I'm, I'm not necessarily outside of that box. Yeah, my, my dad is 57 jerks off twice a day, at least. Are, yeah. Have you noticed your hands are a little rougher? No. Not one more than the other? Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm usually, uh, w- w- on days that I'm not working, mm-hmm. I'm usually a three orgasm a day guy, by hook or by crook, mm-hmm. as it were. Well, not by crook. Let me just not say that. It's too close yeah. to the surviving R. Kelly shit. Just, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm too soon. Whether it's my wife, Mm-hmm. Or myself, mm-hmm. I'm usually going to get three mm-hmm. a day. Oftentimes, it's two to one, so it's it's you know what I mean. But every now and then, it's it's one to two. I, I'm I'm one a day in either either. <clears throat> yeah, I, mean, I, I don't. Board. Yeah, I wouldn't. I don't need that. Mine's almost pragmatic. It's like I got, look, I got to get some shit done. Let me get this fucking monkey off my back. I, I will <laughs> tell you, when I was sick, I was I, I, I it was hands off, and that I, I didn't even think about it. So oh like, yeah, a, a weekend, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna make, oh, I, I'm, I'm gonna I'm, make such a mess. Yeah, well, yeah. I, 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 dude, when, when my back, when I threw my back, where I fucked my back up or whatever, yeah. like you know, it was like a week went by, the, and like I hadn't thought about it because I was in too much pain to think about it. And then I was like, oh, I'm gonna Peter North. Oh, th- dude, this monkey. So when I had my back surgery, I don't think I did anything for like six weeks. Mm. That shit was like a shotgun blast. It was like, <laughs> it was like. Hold on to your butts. Well, they say like uh, <coughs> that celery can increase. Oh, yeah. All that. So it's and funny. To my, celery and pineapple can change it. Well, taste, that, that can change the, the yes, but celery can change volume. the volume. Yes. So, also asparagus. So my buddy Charlie. Yeah, Wait, asparagus changes everything. My buddy Charlie went out and ate like three stalks of celery. He was like, and I was like, I was like, how was it, dude? And he was like, dude, it was fucking normal. I just shit all fucking day. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I will say there has been a un 
a uh, you know a surprising benefit. Lots of sex dreams. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, and, because yeah, I got you. Makes and sense. and they're lucid. Mm-hmm. So in the, I don't remember my dreams that often. Mm-hmm. Probably because my sleep is all fucked up. So in in the sex dream, it wakes me up enough to like start being more lucid that I was dreaming. So then I have like fucking awesome wild like. Well, I'm not gonna have sex now. I can be Spider Man. Who the fuck's gonna have sex? We be Spider Man. And uh, so, like, vivid, like some of my most vivid dreams. Um, and I don't know, like, do you do you have, do you lucid dream very often? Like, you can control the dream. You realize you're dreaming. Uh, what's fairly often? <clears throat> I mean, does it happen more than once a month? No. Once a year. Yeah. Okay. So I'm like a two, three a year guy on average. Okay, yeah, I've, been, ha- right. I've been having them like once a week, mm. and it's it's like it's fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, if they if they could figure out a machine that you can like put on your brain, hit a button, and have amazing matrix like like lucid dreams, sign me up. Where do I where do I cash in? Where where do I Patreon or Kickstarter or <laughs> or whatever that that machine? I want that shit. We're gonna start researching on it on our Patreon. As a matter of fact, for those interested. Yeah, let's, do let's, it. let's get uh, give us some money. Let's get Billy involved. He'll get it done. Billy, <laughs> running after Billy. <laughs> uh, and then of course the the, boo- the booze thing, which has been has been more challenging this early. I've never like been like, oh man, I want a glass of wine. I'm like, not beer, it's fine. But like normally it's like February, mid February, early March before I start, really start feeling temptations. Mm-hmm. But right recently, like, I can just relax, have a glass of wine right now. Not to get drunk, mm-hmm. just the taste of wine. Mm-hmm. You know, but other than that, it's been going pretty well. How about you, Chris? What are your? I didn't really set any resolution. You know, New Year, New Me, right? <laughs> <laughs> Live, laugh, love. All Don't be bullshit. snarky. No, I, I didn't, I didn't really do any resolution. I mean, this, I'd say that I think I'm uh, going to be do the opposite of Bobby and just always have an answer whether it's right or wrong, <laughs> and let the chips fall where they may. <laughs> Remember, no wrong answer is worse than no answer at all. Maybe. Maybe. Um, I need a flow chart for that. Yeah, that one's pretty deep. I mean, one, one it's thing like I, the bandersnatch. Of- <laughs> I, I think this year I'm going to try to use my, my, my skill set from my hobby to make myself more stuff because I don't do that. The cobbler son has no yeah. shoes. Yeah. <clears throat> and I, I know you, you know that as well, and... I mean, Bobby, it was the last time you drew drew something for yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, continue. New New Year, New You. Oh, uh, yeah, that's it. I don't know. I, I At this point, I just want to get healthy. I hate being sick. Sick. Just, I hate being non-productive. That was the hardest part about me being sick is I didn't get anything done today, whether it was my job, my hobby, returning messages. It's just like, oh, I hate it. How does it work when you're working from home and you're sick? Do you still like like get on the computer and answer some emails and bill some hours? How does that work? Something like that. So so honestly, like I you know I have emails that come in all the time and things I have to do and and a, a lot of what I, my job is setting up new accounts mm-hmm. and in that process people send me information I have to vet that information and then send it forward. I was so foggy that I would open my laptop and I could not even process how to get to that application. Oh, yeah. So, okay. I mean, I was, if it's somebody, a lot of, I have a lot of you know, some regulars, people I talk to all the time, say, hey, I'm done with a flu, man. I'm a, I'll am i get this done as soon as I can. Gotcha. And, and everybody was like, oh, nope, no problem. Yeah. Just hit me up when you're, when you're well. Flu's fucking nasty this year. It was. Again. It was bad I got my stuff, flu shot. <clears throat> yeah. And I've avoided any, you know, I haven't been down and out, like, vomiting sick in forever yeah that's good but uh, i did get a cold this year i haven't had a cold in years mm. last time i think the flu was probably two or three years ago and i was like proper like a week in bed mm-hmm. like you're talking about yeah. it was at like no, 102 103 degree fever i didn't have any of the stomach stuff oh man i i, I just had the yeah i wasn't i wasn't uh i wasn't aiming at two Whatever targets the path of least resistance right. <laughs> yeah. i haven't had that in forever <clears throat> Um, we do have a, a f- not a whole lot of news, but it is discussion. But before we do, I wanted to have this quick discussion with you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, with I, I don't know if I, I think you can even participate fully, even given what you've seen, because I don't think any th- no bullseye with the exception of bullseye. Okay, where would you rank major 
heroes and villains in terms of portrayal in the Marvel Netflix stuff? Like who's the best? Mm-hmm. To best to worst. Purple Man comes to mind. As number one? Uh, no, I'm just, I'm just thinking. So, King Prince pretty good, too. Yeah. But let's try to do... Who do you think is the best? Oof. I, I think Wilson Fisk, to okay. me, is the best. He's my number two. Okay. Punisher's my number one. Well, well hang on. As do you, are we doing heroes and villains separate? Both. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know that. Yeah, then, just, by, then by far. Oh, oh, like what's the best? I'm sorry. I yeah, thought we okay. were doing two. Yeah, different yeah, I didn't catch that either. So it's it's John. Yeah, it's Bernthal is number one. Yeah, for me. The me too. Hmm. <clears throat> and I will say Kingpin number two. Kingpin is my number two as well. That was such a. Who's your oh. number three? So that's when it all gets. This thing cotton mouth is pretty good. That's when it all gets trickier for me. Um, I think, I think my number three is Purple Man. Yeah, Purple Man is really good. Like, I think Purple Man is definitely this. Scariest isn't the isn't the word, nor is it terrifying. Maybe unsettling. Mm-hmm. He's the most unsettling villain of mm-hmm. all of these. Mm-hmm. Because he's like an evil child with almost godlike power. Yeah, I mean, one could argue that you know one thing that God's always <clears throat> given us is free will. Mm-hmm. So he robs the greatest gift of God. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a very unnerving concept. In 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 his demeanor, in spite of that, yeah, is is so <clears throat> confident, nonchalant. Yeah, I want you to go smother your baby. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's fucking he's, crazy. No, who is that you're talking Purple about? Man. Purple Man. So, so caveat for me, I have not seen Jessica Jones or Luke Cage. So, you know, Purple Man's powers, right? It's it's just power persuasion, more or less, right? You you have to do anything he tells you okay. to do. So if he's if he's like, I want you to go chop your wife up a millimeter at a time, you will chop your wife up a millimeter at a time. Um, however ridiculous until like until you you die, you know. I want you to hold your breath. Like what that one kid he did, like I want you to stand there. Yeah, but yeah, yeah it's it's just almost like um, it's reminiscent of preacher, you know, like count, yeah, yeah, count the grains word, of sand. Word of God, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, voice of God. Um, yeah, I think anybody seen preacher season two or three? No, I, I, three. I haven't seen any of preacher. I saw I, the first season. I saw the first season, and I, I, I started watching some of the second season, but it's never just like lost connection with mm-hmm. it. Uh, I think uh, here's where it gets. I forgot what I was missing. Okay, I'm sorry. I got to go back. Okay. I got to go back and do this. I finished Voltron. Oh, okay. Wait, I want to finish this discussion okay, okay, first. Okay. Um, after after that, it gets very hairy for me. I'd probably say the nurse. Um, Claire. Yeah. No, really. Uh, yeah. So here's here's one that I she's too over the, all I, over the place for me. I just had to look a new up ri- uh, new character, new writer every every, every other episode. Yeah, I, 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 well, see, that's that's kind of my point is that after I get those three out of the way, mm-hmm. here's one for you. I'm all I, I'm all over the place in terms of how I feel about these characters. Madam Gal, <clears throat> she's not bad. She's not bad. Electra's she, not bad. Jerry's not bad. The lawyer, Trinity, she's not bad. She's an interesting character. I fucking love to hate her. But did you know her from the books or anything? Like, no, no, no. But that's kind of what I'm getting at. Okay, so. Yeah, I don't know. Like, like I don't mind. I don't mind Luke Cage. Like <laughs> he's hit or miss for me. But so is yeah. Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones and Luke Cage is like it all depends on the, the ang- scene, yeah, the angle. Of the scene. <laughs> you know, like yeah, I get that. Like sometimes they're that. exactly who I want them to be, and sometimes I feel like they're both overdoing it. Is Jessica Jones's mom in the comic book? I don't know. That'd be interesting. I don't know because I still think to this day that scene when she walks through that window, like she comes to that window. And she just looks like a fucking monster, and it, it's such. It's whoever shot that scene, the contrast of like the mother, the mother returning, mm. and like the the creature that comes to the window at the same time in that facade is like terrifying. You know what I mean? There's um, but after those three, there's like a big fine category. Like I feel like those three are the standouts, and then everything else kind of is. So what about? Daredevil, Matt Murdock. I think he, I think he's hate, trash. He really? hates him. He's hated him from the day one. He, that's I my don't biggest problem with Daredevil. I don't think he's bad. Hmm. I you know I do wonder, man. Once 
we get away from Netflix for a while. Mm. You got the DVDs, the Blu-rays, right? Of the 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 ones, the Blu-rays that they released. I do wonder if you go back, if we go back in a year or two and, and watch that. We should do we should do that. Mm-hmm. Like go back, pick a pick a season, watch it, and then come back. And we don't have to do them all in a row or anything, right? I I, I wonder if. After everything said and done, and we've seen how everything goes, if we can go back and watch it with some enjoyment, um, or if it'd be uh, shouldn't go back, maybe. I don't. I don't think it's that. I think they still. I think Netflix was still successful with this. I. I do. I think it was just too much too soon, and it was overshadowed with how big the Avengers stuff got. I don't know, man. I really feel like there's only four good. Maybe no, I'm going to say four. I'm going to say four good Netflix. Seasons, Daredevil, one and two, Jessica Jones one and Punisher one. The entire season, and no, just as a season, as a as a season. Yeah, but like, yeah, but at the same time, the first half of Loose Cage is really good. Yeah, you know, but the second half is really bad, I, and that's it, why I didn't. The watch last that episode is, is really bad, and the last episode is terrible. Yeah, you guys, there's some high points in season two of Luke Cage. Yes, you know. But I'm uh, saying as a season, I hear like you collectively. I hear you. Yeah. That dude, the, the funniest part for me in Luke Cage season one is I can't remember whether it's Luke Cage hitting Diamondback or Diamondback hitting Luke Cage, but one hits the other and the other one hits a van, and then Delayed like three reaction. seconds later, yeah. the van moves. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's like boom. <laughs> you know, uh, we, Bobby and I were talking earlier, and and I I mentioned this. Would Adam? Would you be okay if? <clears throat> If what I guess this will be on Disney instead of doing these thirteen episode seasons, they just put out a two hour movie once I, I or think, twice a year as, with the content. I think the problem with all these Netflix things, and I think it's we've been pretty uniform, is they've gone on too long. It's just too thirteen hours is yeah. just too much. It's too much. Yeah, I agree. And I mean, the thing is, if the arc justified eight episodes or four episodes, they should have just they should have gone with that. They did that with Voltron, which I'm going to get to back here in a second, and it was successful with that. Yeah, they should you know? they should treat it like we treat a podcast. I agree. <laughs> you know, you know, if don't, it goes three hours, yeah. then cool. If it goes, they don't try to make, don't try to. And I guess it comes down to, to this logistics in there with pay and how many hours and whatnot, and the stars and the story, and they got to produce this yeah, many episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Contractual stuff. Exactly. I think that's the wrong way to go. One hundred percent. But I do. As clean as everybody acts, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is right now. It's muddy as fuck. It really is. You got, you got Daredevil, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Jessica Jones, Defenders, Agents of Shield, mm-hmm. Runaways. What else do we have? Um, uh, Inhumans, Gifted, Gifted. Is that the same? That's not the same universe. Well, though. no, it's it's, it's technically yeah. Is Inhumans oh, in the same universe? Inhumans is in the same universe. Cloak and Dagger came out that nobody Cloak, said is a that word in about. the same universe? Y- yes, it's supposed to be. It's okay. on free form. I never saw a second I don't know. of it. Um, I don't know. Uh, Agent Carter. Yes. Um, so that's ten different fucking seasons, and that's not counting the gifted one. That's not counting. Uh, wasn't there another X Men Le- one? Le- was it Legion? No, Legion. No. Yep, Legion, Legion. is yep. another X Men one. Yep. Um, and that's supposed; those are supposed to be loosely tied to the Fox, right? You know, Marvel Universe. So, and then you have the movies, which they're great. The mm-hmm. Marvel movies are great, but they're not all the same. They're not all cuffed in the same cloth. If you, if you go back and watch, go back and watch Iron Man, and then immediately watch Infinity War. Immediately, it like you're like, holy fuck, this this escalated quickly. I mean. Not, no pun intended. I mean, it does that quite, quite, you know, quite quickly because it's like 15, 20 movies. But like, what the tone and what they were going for in the original Iron Man and the see, to see like Iron Man struggle with Warmonger because I watched this like this YouTube clip of like all Iron Man's great fight scenes, mm-hmm. and I watched that Warmonger fight scene, and then like later you watch them fight um, fucking Thanos, and you're like, <laughs> this shit is fucking crazy. I mean, it. it, it yeah, but that, there's that, a that, lot. That, make, that makes sense to me. I mean, it's one. He, he didn't understand the technology the same. Yeah, I, he's I, ten I years you. in. He's more experienced. He's got, of course. Yeah, but like, it's still, makes, it's, that it's, works for me, dude. But it's like at the same. It's literally flying to the moon and then bl- building like the Starship Enterprise. It's like Sputnik and the Starship Enterprise. It's fucking crazy. It's and I'm not saying it's fine. Don't me wrong, but it's like 
the Marvel, the Marvel universe, there's a lot going on, and I, I think there's just a saturation point, man. I don't think we have time to give a fuck about Daredevil. At least me. Am I, I might be rejecting. I don't have time to give a, a fuck about Daredevil. Yeah, but I think also that like, your schedule has changed. You know what I mean? Like you had time to give a fuck about Daredevil back then. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, no, I mean, I had time to watch Daredevil, and I got like, like three minutes into it. I'm like, oh, yeah, like, Not the same, though. Your time is more valuable now, just the way it's laid out. Maybe. You know, Maybe. so I think, that, I think that does count for something. It might. Like, I, I, I don't, I've been on the schedule for, for a year and a half now. Yeah, but, it's all, but since you went on it, it's been more of a challenge. Mm-hmm. You know, okay. like, I, I think that, I just don't think the shit is that good. Maybe. I, 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 I mean, I, I think it has its high points. Mm-hmm. I just don't think. Is Defenders I, the worst? Back to Chris, yes. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Back yeah. to Chris's point, I think if it were a two-hour movie a year, we'd all be, we'd all seen it. Maybe. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. I think that is the way. Well, I mean, I watched three hours about the Fire Festival this past week, so <laughs> I definitely would have watched a two-hour movie. <laughs> Sick or not. <laughs> All right, Voltron. Yeah, so I finished Voltron uh, the last season. And it is definitely over? Oh, yeah. Oh, so, so they, they nipped it in the bud then. Oh, I mean, they, they came, they saw, and they concluded. Now, is it rolling into something else, though? It could. They could. Vehicles or? Well, spoilers. <laughs> I mean, they, they do hint at the possibility. You know, they even make... they. The cool thing about what they did here is the first Voltron can still be in canon. It it can literally be a TV show about Voltron in this universe. So you're saying the original the original Voltron uh, American from 84. Yeah. version of Go. Yeah. On. Okay. Um could be like and there's like a, there's actually a point where they're they're in somebody's house and that cartoon is on the TV. And like, wow, this 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 didn't really happen. This is not how it happened, or whatever, you know. It's, which is cool. So in that world, they're like, you know, so it's kind of like Logan saying those X Men comics were full of shit. Exactly, kinda, okay. exactly. But there's also hints about the Garrison Force or whatever that might be the future, and that's the vehicles, right? Yeah, you know that they, that could be in canon as well or something, and they could come back and do like a Legend of Korra off the last the last Airbender right. if they wanted to. They don't need to. Um but I will say, man, there is, there is some sacrifices, and there, there's like some, like every but every character that you're introduced in this series, like you know, significant character, not just like you know somebody in the background, has their their proper notes. Even even people that you've lost to kind of go back and you see the conclusion of everything, which is it's it's fucking well done. It's it's well done. It's it's a masterpiece piece of classical music and their sacrifice like you're like wow i didn't think that they would they would do it like that um so it's it's pretty cool but there's one bit so you know so you know shiro being gay Mm -hmm. and it and like a lot of the i guess uh, there was a lot of criticism that he wasn't gay enough but Mm -hmm. they kind of just hinted it correct so the last scene that you see and i'm gonna go ahead and spoil it because it has nothing to do with the story as much as it has to do with them making a social thing after they try to make a social thing, I think kind of blew up in their face is him. Like they're doing like little snapshots of everybody. Like there's a photo and, and, and hunk does X, Y, Z. And there's a photo and, you know, Lance does X, Y, Z. Now they're all still right. There might be like some forced, like some zooming in, but this mm-hmm. basically, you know, the last thing is Shiro and like Shiro gave up war and, and finally married. And he's walking down with a dude mm-hmm. like, and, yet, and like they kiss. Mm-hmm. Right. It's fine, no big deal. But it's like it didn't it didn't match with the other scenes. And I'm wondering, like, do they have to add this one in the last the last thing to to make okay? We're gonna we're, we're all in this time. We're gonna do it right. Make sure we focus on it, and this is how it's gonna be. So I'm, I'd be curious to have a conversation with whoever wrote wrote it and and did everything because it because they could have done the stills like just married and exactly had them together, exactly you know? exactly. Yeah. But they went they went they went above and beyond. To like, nope, he's definitely gay. You're, and he's married. Your O went a little uh, bit beyond. A hundred percent. So beyond? <laughs> yeah. Uh, whatever. <laughs> um but uh it was it was really it was really <clears throat> cool and um I don't know. I mean there's nothing better than when you fucking invest that yeah, much time into a yeah. show that it ends and you know does a good job. Fuck I had one other the one other thing I saw. <laughs> Fuck, I'm sorry, man. My brain is mush today. Uh Matt Naaman down, downsizing. 
Have you ever seen, have you seen that movie? Uh, yeah. I know of it. I, I've never watched so it. So the premise is, is sometime in the near future, they figure out how to reduce the mask of mass of people to one 2,774th scale. So you're basically five centimeters tall. Mm. Right, or five inches tall. I think it's yeah, five yeah, centimeters. Yeah, little, little as fuck. So... The whole premise of this is overpopulation and destroying the planet. Do they, so, live, do they live in a detail? They could. <laughs> in, in It'd be fact, like a mansion, a glass in, mansion. In fact, people carry around people. So people are choosing to downsize. And basically, if you had you know $152,000, it's the equivalent of $12.5 million. So you can basically, they, they started producing these small, commu- small communities. So it's like going to Costa Rica, right? <laughs> I don't know, Chris. Sorry. They miniaturize some very fancy communities. So basically, you can live in a dollhouse that's a mansion mm. that like has all the amenities and everything. And uh, and Matt, you know, Matt Damon's character is thinking about it, and you know, he ends up downsizing. And you know, there's there's some social economical issues with it because sometimes governments are downsizing prisoners. Hang on, is is downsizing reversible? In no, this world? okay, no, it's not. Once you reduce your mass, that's you're, it. you're done. And it's it's a simple. It, the The interesting thing about it is like they have to shave your head, they have to shave all your body hair, because those cells can't change, uh-huh. and they have to pull out all your teeth. And if you have any hip replaced, oh, I'm sorry, pull out any fake teeth. Okay, I mean, it's not, you know, and it, which doesn't make sense because teeth it's and fine. hair should be the same, right? Um, and if you have any hip replacement or anything, you can't you can't be downsized because it'll fuck you up. So they had to pull out your fillings and then they shrink you and they put them back in. Could you imagine being that person that? That, that when they found out about the fillings, oh yeah. So one, so there's a there's a story about some guy's head exploding. Oh, because the, the tooth couldn't shrink and pop, um, like a can of Lacroix. But there's this, <laughs> but there's this kind of humanitarian thing, and there's just kind of this like soft, like we're destroying the environment, and there's like we're all gonna die anyway. It's very, it's a very strange movie. Do they show his head explode? No, no. Damn, it's it. very PG. Because I heard it happen in the afternoon, like two thirty. <laughs> <laughs> oh god there's a great dad joke i was gonna send to you to get joe <clears throat> i forgot you've been slacking on that recently. i have i have yeah. okay because he's, he's he, other people like tyler and him started doing it to him so like i feel like his spider senses are like yeah, hyper aware I got, I got him a couple yeah chris yeah. got him so to, like, no 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 they need to let bobby do his thing <laughs> god damn it we'll just send him to bobby yeah, <laughs> so, don't don't don't, don't <clears> i've been this. trying to i've been trying to let it ride for a minute yeah it, um so it's it's a it's an interesting it's an interesting uh, movie, but I, I I gotta say, man, there's like, like I don't know where the the movie, the ideas, and like the political statements, like separate. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because at the end, it just leaves you kind of like confused. Like, what the fuck? There's like this last scene, and you have no idea what it means. You know? Can you separate yourself from that, or do you have a hard time? Or do you wrestle with it? What's that? Like. Uh... From these movies, that there's like this obvious political or social statement being made. Well, I mean, when they're, I mean, I don't. Ha- can I separate myself from that? I mean, I, I for the for the sake of enjoying or not enjoying a movie I mean, or whatever. Of course, okay. of course. Oh, no, I mean, I'm, if, I'm, if, I'm asking out of curiosity. If the, if the point is to make a political statement, mm-hmm. and then that statement is is muddied, I'm like, well, what What are you trying to What are you trying to express here? I mean, I'm fine. Like, mm-hmm. like listen, when I watch when I when I watch the day after tomorrow, I get it. It's a global warming mm-hmm. you know statement like we need to take care of our planet and our planet will take care of us in the bad way i get that that's clear and I, that the joke when i came out is brought to you is a great movie brought to you by your green party candidate mm-hmm. and i'm fine with that i mean it's it, i enjoy that movie mm-hmm. but this one is very it's about waste it's about like you know so there's a whole thing like hey man thanks for what you're doing for the environment right but people are really doing it to live like millionaires Right, mm-hmm. so they're going. They're they're reducing to live in like mansions. Mm-hmm. So this is kind of like irony of it. Like you're not really, you know, it's, it's bullshit. It's funny when you mention the thing about the dollhouse. All I could imagine was an actual dollhouse, and like you took your first shit, and you're like, oh fuck, I didn't think this through. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's just one scene. This is one scene with um, uh, Doogie Hauser where mm-hmm. they're like they're doing like this, this place called Leisure World, mm-hmm. right? So it's like a football stadium size, but of course, like every house in there is like you know twenty thousand square feet equivalent. 
and he he walks out of his the, the front door of this McMan like this huge mansion, and then all of a sudden the mansion opens up. It's like do 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 like it unfolds, mm-hmm. and his wife is sitting there like in the bathtub, and she's like, "And I got this new diamond ring, and I got this new diamond. Like, how much did it cost? Eighty two dollars. Eighty two dollars. That's our food budget for a year, Laura. You know what I mean? And everybody's like, of course, oh wow, your money goes, but it's just it's it's still greed, and you know. You know, but it's it's muddled, dude. It's a great it's a great theme. Synthesized as fuck. I'll never forget. I was in a uh, elementary school in chorus because that's where the cool kids went. And the teacher was like, "This song that we're gonna sing, I'm gonna use the exact instrument from the opening of Dookie Hauser." And like, she was super. Pumped about a it. Casio keyboard? Yeah, and I was like, I got a Casio too, bitch. What are you fucking bragging about? <laughs> <You know>? Relax. <clears throat> um, we only have a couple notes, but they are kind of fruitful. And one, the first one is, and the Oscar goes to, the Oscar nominations came out. Did you look at this at all? Uh, yes and no. I know Black Panther. Yeah, so let's talk about that. Best picture, Black Panther, Black Klansman, Bohemian Rhapsody, the favorite, Green Book, Green Book, Roma, A Star Is Born, and Vice. I've only seen Black Panther because I. This is all Netflix shit that I'll end up catching. Yeah, I've seen um, Bohemian Rhapsody. They say Black Klansman is great. I've heard that as well. Um, they say Green Book is great. That's with uh, Cottonmouth and and Aragorn. Yeah, and then Vice, he was just telling me it was, you know, Christian Bale. Like, did, you, I'm, I'm, did you like it? Did you see it? I haven't seen it. I want to see it. I've I, heard it's trash. I haven't seen really. it. Yeah, I've heard it's trash. Like, it sucks. So. Well, I mean, I knew exactly what, with that cast and that topic, I knew that's exactly why they released that movie in December. It was, it was oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, actress in a supporting role, Amy Adams for Vice, and that's the only one that, a whole bunch of people don't care about. Oh, Rachel Weisz is... Pretty girl mm-hmm. uh, the, for the favorite actor in a supporting role. Ugh, who cares? I, just, I, just, like, I mean, who is it, dude? Don't. Well, I was just going to do like the big, the big ones. Actress in a supporting role is uh, somebody from Green Book, somebody from Black Klansman, somebody from A Star Is Born. That's not Lady, Lady Gaga, Gaga. Uh, or Lady Gaga. Uh, can you ever forgive me, uh, Richard E. Grant, Sam Rockwell, and, and Vice? But I was going to do. The best actor, best actress, best actor in a leading role: Christian Bale and Vice, Bradley Cooper, A Star Is Born, William Defoe at Eternity's Gate, Rami Malek, Malek for Bohemian Rhapsody, mm-hmm. and hmm. Viggo Mortensen for Green Book. Uh, mm-hmm. Actress in a leading role: Yalitza Apricio for Roma, Glenn Close and The Wife, Lady Gaga, A Star Is Born. Oh, she okay. Olivia Coleman, The Favorite, and Melissa McCarthy. Can you ever forgive me? Director, Spike Lee for Black Klansman, Powell Pawlowski for Cold War, Yorgos Lanthimos for The Favorite, Alfonso Curran for Roma, and Adam McKay for Vice. And then the other one I wanted to do was... So Black Panther got Best Film, but not Best Director. Yeah, which is not necessarily uncommon. Um, So real quick, Adam McKay is one of those guys that runs around with Jed Apatow in them making those, you know, frat boy movies. Uh-huh. So that's pretty wild that he's nominated for Best Director. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I <clears throat> I mean, look, I want Black Panther to win just because it would be a comic book movie win. Yeah. But I don't feel like it necessarily deserves it, if I'm being honest. Like, And it's the only movie I've seen. So maybe if I see those other four, I'll be like, oh, yeah, Black Panther definitely deserves it because <laughs> these other ones are trash. But, like, I just... <clears throat> for for a comic book movie, I understand the culture the cultural importance of Black Panther. I get it, but for a comic book movie, there are a number of comic book movies that kind of tell the same story, and they would never be considered, which is fine. But I just don't feel like this one. Which which not only is it fine, I feel like it makes sense. I don't think it's um, better than Infinity War. No, but you know we've talked about that as well. Like that movie in a vacuum, how does that play out? I don't know. And, have you guys yeah. ever done that? Have you ever like purposefully watched everything that's nominated? Like, I all, always do. Well, well, like okay, like I you well, get I, serious with that. See the eyes. Well, I, I, no, no. Was, I mean, no. I mean, I, I do. I, I like that's a thing I do every year. Right. Uh, not not for like best 
score no, no, or like whatever. The but, picture of the yeah, year, but, so, but, yeah, I, I watch them all. I worked in video rental for a long time, so I would purposefully try to watch as many as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's it's fun to do. It's it, exhausting sometimes though, because some of it's like, oh, it's, yeah. The Oscars used to be a big deal for us. We used to talk about that shit. Yeah, and, like watch and watch them. I want to say like the two thousand three to two thousand. You, nine, seven, you, or nine. Do, do you you, you want to know when I when and why I stopped watching? I think when Gary Oldman didn't get something. Uh, no, I think it was when Scorsese won Best Director. Oh, okay. I was like, I'm done. I'm, I'm done here. <laughs> I'm. He's finally made it. Yeah, I'm happy. I can go home. What was that for? Uh, Departed. Was it Departed? Mm-hmm. Which I was happy about because like he had been nominated for like a few like uh, that like. I, I could tell because like, there is a formula to this Oscar shit. And yeah. Like, oh, because you wanted games in New York. Yeah, but then I started thinking, like, man, like if you look back on this dude's career, and he's going to win one Oscar, should it be for Departed or should it be for Games in New York? Yeah. And it one hundred percent should be for Departed because mm-hmm. that's the type of movie that guy fucking makes, mm-hmm. you know. And like, so I don't know. Um, that's about all the thoughts I have on it. I, I hope Black Panther wins, honestly, just because it'll be a fucking comic book movie win. Yeah. Like I, I, I wouldn't give a fuck if it was Infinity War or if if it was um, uh, Ant Man the Wasp. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, I would, I would pull for it. I would definitely care if it was Ant Man the Wasp. <laughs> I do, I do have. I, a, mean, I, I mean, like I'm, I'm not like that. I'd be like that's that's bullshit. <laughs> I do have a question <laughs> about the Oscar. I mean, like, 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 I mean, let me let me say this, man, because I I feel like I should just shut up. Like, if they if. If Black Panther wins, which I don't think it's going to win, it won't. I think I, and which is almost more insulting. I think they're just they're just giving it pandering. Like, they're pandering to it. I don't think that's necessarily untrue. They're pandering to it, which I think is just. I, I think it's a step backwards for comic book movies. Well, like you know I, what I mean? just like like my thing is this. Like, I mean, I've asked myself this a thousand times before this year, but like. What is this shit based on? Like, what what gets your movie into that? And obviously, well, it's the Academy. Like, yeah. it's the Academy that makes the choices. And who um, is that? Correct. So, like, it's a bunch. It's a bunch of. It used to be a bunch of the, old white guys. Yeah, they've changed the the, the panel panel okay. now yeah. to get more of a. I feel like somebody someplace like, well, it's not going to be all white Oscars this year because we're putting Black Panther in it. You know, what I, mean? I feel like that's. I feel like that's some shit behind it, and I and I hate to be cynical with this shit. And listen, I like Black Panther. Yeah, it's it's a good movie, you know. But I I've always felt that it was <sighs> people put a little extra sauce on it. It's good. It's 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 good. I enjoyed it. But like, I think the reason why extra sauce is on it is because there's a large population that went to see it that don't know the genre. Maybe, and, maybe, yeah. and that that might that might be fair. But now I feel like. Now I feel like people like like it going up against you know, and I haven't seen all these other movies. No, you know? I haven't seen any of them. Um, but I, I can tell you right now, like, like Bohemian Rhapsody was awesome. Mm-hmm. It might not have, actually Black Panther might be a better movie than Bohemian Rhapsody. Mm-hmm. I mean, it might very well. Mm-hmm. Um, I might have enjoyed it. It's two different types of movie. I might have enjoyed it, but it's it's. I don't know. I think they're. I think they're pandering. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to win. They they because they would never do that. It like is, it, it's it, nominated it, for like ten. It's going to win something. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. It's but but but, like but winning, awards. winning. Nobody cares about special effects. Yeah, winning best sound mixing and shit is a costume design. Yeah, it's different. It's different. And and like they would never. I don't give a fuck if it was like. I would be shocked if it were if it won costume design. Take any of the. I don't know who it's up against, but that would yeah. that would be shocking to me too. But take like any fucking movie and take any sort of like social whatever out of it, and I don't think like. Let's say it was racially motivated, so let's just remove the racially motivated aspect of it. I don't give a fuck if it was Whitey Ford and the Whitey Whites that were sitting at the fucking panel. They would never give fucking a comic book movie, fucking movie of the year, no matter how fucking good it is. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be Vice. I, that's I, what I, I guarantee I, you. Yeah. In this in this political I, climate, it's going to be Vice. Maybe I mean Black Landsman's making a lot of noise this year. That, like, that would be the other one. <clears throat> That'd be the other one. That's that um, when I re- read the list. That was my instinct. I'm saying, and it's a true story. And shit, 50, true story. And fifty-five percent Vice, forty-five percent Black Panther. Yeah, Plansman. yeah. If I, if I was that, that, that'd be the Vegas odds for me. Um, and the next one goes to, and the Razzie goes to. So the Razzie uh, nominations yeah. went up as well. And I'll see if I know any of these movies. But worst, you just, you just changed Luke. Yeah, hmm. this this past week I got I I got his box out so to speak, 
and um, was able to swap the accessories, which was what was keeping him in the position he was in. Because I purposely had him in a – this is a conversation that Chris and I had because Chris was making fun of my pose. And I was like, dude, he's purposely in a bad pose because I know I don't want him to look like that. Six months later. Six months later, I finally got the, found the box and made the swap. And I broke him in the uh, – but Laura doesn't know. So keep that quiet. How did you break him? Dude, I wasn't thinking. I was doing it. One of those days, like, I, I'm, I'm waiting for paint to dry. I'm doing this. I got a thousand things going on. And I was like, oh, I need to swap his hand out. And I pulled the hand out, and now came the cords and everything with it because it was the electronic mm-hmm. hand that connected to the fucking, uh, you know. And I mean, I could splice the wires and tape them and all, but I'm not using that fucking hand anyway, so whatever. Um, worst picture. Gotti, The Happy Time Murders, Holmes and Watson, Robin Hood, which I did hear was trash. Yeah. Winchester. Uh, worst actress. Winchester. Jennifer Garner in Peppermint, Amber Heard in London Fields, Melissa McCarthy in The Happy Time Murders and Life of the Party, and she's also nominated for Best Actress yeah, in a different yeah, movie, yeah. which is awesome. Yeah. Helen Mirren in Winchester, Amanda S- Seyfried in The Clapper, um, uh, Worst Actor, <laughs> Johnny Depp in Sherlock Gnomes. <laughs> yep, that's a real thing. Will Ferrell for Holmes and Watson, John Travolta in Gotti. Donald J. Trump as himself for Death of a Nation in Fahrenheit 9-11. That's pretty funny. Bruce Willis in Death Wish. Worst supporting actor, Jamie Foxx in Robin Hood. Ludicrous voice only in Show Dogs. <laughs> John C. Riley in Holmes and Watson. Damn, they fucking hate that movie. Uh, yeah, Justice Smith I heard it was bad. in yeah. Jurassic World, Fallen yeah, I Kingdom. I love those guys. Worst supporting actress. Uh, Kellyanne Conway as herself in Fahrenheit 11.9, Marisa Gay Harden in Fifty Shades Freed, Kelly Peterson in Gotti, they fucking hate that movie too, J- Jazz Sinclair in Slender Man, uh, and then um, uh, uh, the, uh, Melania Trump in Melania, Melania in uh, Fahrenheit uh, 11.9. Worst screen combo. Any two actors or puppets, especially those creepy sex scenes in The Happy Time Murders, Johnny Depp in his fast-fading film career. <laughs> wow. This is fucking great. Um, Will Ferrell and John C. Riley trashing two of literature's most beloved characters. Kelly Peterson and John Travolta getting Battlefield Earth-type reviews. <laughs> uh, uh, Donald J. Trump in his self-perpetuating pettiness. Uh, worst remake. Death of a Nation, remake of Hillary's America, Death Wish, Holmes and Watson, The Meg, and Robin Hood. Worst director, Holmes and Watson, Gotti, Fifty Shades Freed, Happy Time Murders, and Winchester. Worst screenplay, Death of a Nation, Fifty Shades Freed, Gotti, The Happy Time Murders, Winchester. What's Death of a Nation? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Wait, uh, is that the... uh, Is that like... Is that another... like a? I mean, I, so I, I real quick on Gotti. I remember I was in New York City last summer, staying. I was staying in Brooklyn that week, and they had somebody. You know how they do the the ads for movies, and they just plaster. They had a whole wall plastered of Gotti. I'm like, oh, okay. And then it comes out and is like apparently one of the like lowest performing box office movies ever, or some shit. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. And then I heard that Holmes and Watson Netflix turned it down. Oh, really? Yeah, and they ended up releasing it theatrically, and it just bombed. Speaking of of going straight to Netflix or Hulu, Mm -hmm. the new Titans now may not get a theatrical release and go to Hulu and or Netflix. That's the word on the street. The new Titans? I mean, sorry, not the new Titans. The new Mutants. The the new Mutants. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Because they were supposed to start filming uh, reshoots in September, and it never happened. Mm -hmm. So they said they may just drop it on Hulu and be done with it. You know what? That's not a bad idea. Do the same thing with the X Men. Yeah, I agree. Then I'll watch it. Uh, what? Time out. Yeah, go for it. I'd make a thing of it. Mm-hmm. Hey, man, we're all going to get together yeah, yeah, yeah. and watch. Yeah, yeah, I'd be know, up for that. The Phoenix in Bobby's basement. Yeah, I'd be up for that. I'd be up for that. And I, I think, I think at some point in the future, that'll be it'll yeah. be the same day. Yeah, I'm down with Theatrical that. Theatrical and how 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 long do we think theaters gonna be around? I don't know, because the two are so much in cahoots. That's the thing. Hollywood and the American theaters are so in cahoots. I hear you. I hear you. But Netflix is is taking a big piece of that pie. Yeah. Yeah. A big piece of that pie. But I think, like, you know, we had this conversation. Like, I think that's why Bright got terrible reviews and everything. Because it's not not fucking Shawshank, but it's not a terrible movie. I liked it. I enjoyed enjoyed it. it. I'm looking forward to another one of that. Yeah. I I like the world. I watch the sequel. You know. Yeah. It's fucking charming. You know, we talked about the possibility of perhaps fucking everything was slandered because it was, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of 
circumventing the system. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, there's a whole in the whole culture of, of not liking orcs. That too. Yes. That too. Um, and Bird Box, you know, people still talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. Have you watched it yet? Mm-mm. Not going to watch it? No, I, I, I'm not against watching it. I, I got to get through Punisher. I got. Mm-hmm. I just feel like there's I'm, I'm swamp with shit to watch. Yeah, so much stuff to watch. I did watch uh, two documentaries also, an amendment to my week, was um, something on the, this uh, this community in Long Island that's like experiencing this huge unemployment population mm-hmm. since the Great Recession. And... Uh, it was kind of it was kind of fascinating and sad, like all these like fifty year old people that are unemployed, and you know like this one guy applied to like drive trucks for FedEx, yeah, and like you know he got disqualified because he was overqualified. Oh, really? And, yeah, and like, but he also can't get a job within his field because nobody's looking for a fifty year old dude to start working for him. They want the guys that are fresh out of school mm-hmm. and yeah. hip and new and yeah. you know blah blah blah. So it was fucking sad to watch. Um, I think this one guy ended up committing suicide. They say it was like some disease he contracted or whatever, but I think he was committed suicide yeah. for a possible life insurance pull out for his family. But um, <sighs> That's crazy, man. That's yeah. And I watched another documentary, too, that was really interesting on uh, the gentrification of Chelsea, New York. Um, they built this... It's fucking gingers, man. They built this... Gingers. <laughs> gentrification. Dude. <laughs> Dude, what if? Can you imagine all the redheads to start moving into your neighborhood? <laughs> Spreading their soullessness. <laughs> um, but it was it was fucking fascinating. Like they 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 have this school called um, the Avenues, I think is what it's called, and it's like some state of the art fucking school. Like every kid that goes there from a young age, like you learn English, Spanish, and Chinese from the moment you enter the doors, and. Everybody gets a fucking iPad and every, you know, like, like you find your classes by touching the big screen in the main lobby that like, you know, it's fucking state of the art. Uh, $40,000 a year, I think, to attend. Yeah, nuts. So they built all these like super like rich uh, apartment buildings around there as well and condos and townhouses and all this shit, you know, $11 million apartments, et cetera, and or condos. And right directly across the street is a fucking project is like a housing project and like they interview kids that go to the school they interview kids in these projects and like uh it's on hbo it's fucking fascinating though like like the confusion between the two worlds and how the insertion of the two together is confusing for everyone you know and it's it's Mm. it's really interesting uh, but I watched, um, or, or rather, the Super Bowl 2019 uh, movie trailer speculation, and emphasis on speculation, might be another in-game trailer. Oh, cool. What about uh, Star Wars? Might be a Captain Marvel, another Captain Marvel trailer. Well, we saw one that came out yesterday. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. Captain that's, Marvel that's, came out yesterday? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll pull it up. Another Shazam trailer. Uh, episode 9 is rumored. Toy Story. I'm sorry, not Captain Marvel. Shazam. Did you see the Shazam? No, no, no. Okay. Toy Story 4. Because that's a real Captain Marvel. Is rumored. Godzilla, King of Monsters, is rumored. Lego Movie 2, which is called Lego Movie 2, the second part, which I love as a title. Uh, Alita. Got, there's a strong trailer out for that already, though, so that's... Yeah, but, you know, you, it's, not, it's not uncommon for films to have two or three. Right. Uh, let's see what else. Dumbo. Yeah. Uh, Pet Cemetery, which is a crazy picture. Uh, possibly another Hellboy trailer, Detective Pikachu, John Wick 3. But this article may have published before that other one came out. Yeah. Uh, Aladdin, Men in Black International, Lion King, Sp- another Spider-Man Far From Home, It 2, I would say that's likely, and possibly a Joker. Oh, Okay. Well, that might be worth watching now. Yeah, I mean, episode nine and Joker trailers are at the top of my list. Do you guys historically watch the Super Bowl? Historically, no. I, I used to historically, no. um, but not 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 so much not so much anymore. I don't, I don't only really fuck with I don't really fuck with football. Anymore. I, I, I watch it for the uh, for the commercials. That's literally the only reason I watch the Super Bowl. All right, let's uh, stop this real quick and watch this trailer. All right. All right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> Dude, I think they're trying to go for the Guardian swag. Uh, that's exactly what it is. They're going, they're I, going for a... They might be, they might be swagging a little too much. Might be I, too much swag on that, on that Guardian. 
There might be. There might be. But like the action scenes, it's very Superman esque. That one part very looks Superman-esque. cool. Yeah. Jumping off the building, getting struck, and then taking off looks cool. Yeah. Um, there's there's another bit where he's flying. I watched it a couple times, mm-hmm. and then when he's fighting whoever the the, the Mark Strong is, mm-hmm. Mark Strong has lightning powers as well. And at one point, he's flying, hitting him. So I'm like, it, it's very Zod versus Superman esque. Mm-hmm. I'm like, ugh. So I've already been down this road before. I'm not so much worried about that, but those fucking yucks, man. Where's your finest beer? I'm like, I don't know. Uh, some, somebody said it's big with superpowers. It's the movie Big with Superpowers. Okay. And that's, what it's, that's what it looks like. And I, I'm, we haven't seen that before. No. no. I'm, not, I'm, I'm not angry with that. I'm, I'm, I'm not angry, angry with that. I'm, I'm angry with it. Why? But that's who, that's who Captain Marvel is. I, that's not who I, I, I know that's, that's a representation but that's not who I've read him ever to be. I've never read him to do anything <laughs> remotely close to, where's your finest beer? He's still a kid. You know what I mean? I mean, um, like, he's, de- def- he's definitely, even in the Justice League, he-, he had that kid swag. Yeah, but I mean, like, in the Superman Batman with Shazam in it, it's not yeah, that. Yeah, but he's, like, in one scene. And, it's, and, it's not, it's and not I have very... a Superman Shazam book, and he's not that. I don't know. I like. Yeah. I just don't. It's too much for me. It, it, and I'm going to go opening night, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm going to have. I'm going to sit down and hope that I like it. But I don't like the trailers. Yeah. My only knowledge of that character is the the DC animated movie that was out recently. I've I've seen that. Mm-hmm. Is that the one where Black Adam? Yeah, it's a Black yeah. Adam. Yeah, but Su- is Superman in that one as well. I don't. I there's don't there's a Superman versus Shazam movie. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I think it's Superman and Shazam. They don't fight in, mm. um, but it's it's a it's a origin story for him and, and Black Adam comes back and whatnot. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know about that one, buddy. It'd be fun. He looks so terrible. He does look. It's definitely the it worst looks a bit muscle bad cosplay. Suit. It it, it de- it's definitely the most. This is padded muscle suit. <clears throat> like, like I know all the Batman and Superman suits were all padded a little, but that wasn't a hundred percent West. You know what I mean? <laughs> but they still got fucking jacked. You know what I mean? Where this guy, I'm sure he got into some decent yeah, shape. Yeah, I mean, he's probably in decent shape. Yeah, I mean, being in know, the business. Yeah, but he's not like, he's not John Jones, whatever it is, not John Jones, Jim Jones, swole, like like all those other guys were. Dipset. That guy too. Um, hey, uh, Ghostbusters 3 trailer. Mm-hmm. What do you think? I'm excited, man. I it's it's like bittersweet to me. Did you did you read the Twitter salt? No, no they're so, like all the well. Leslie Jones she's tweeted at she was, yeah. She oh really? Pissed that they're like oh we just don't exist. Or yeah, something like I mean that. you shouldn't. I mean yeah. not you should exist as a person, but that movie shouldn't exist. Yeah, it's garbage. Um, it's hot garbage. It's really bad. I've never watched it. You know what I you don't know do it. you know what annoys me most about that movie? I have seen it. Uh, Chris Hemsworth. It's how <laughs> it's how some of the ghosts break the widescreen bars. It drives me nuts. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It drives me fucking nuts. <laughs> um, <clears throat> like uh, anyway, uh, but Deadpool did it to be fun. Yes, yes. So it's bittersweet to me. Like in, in one sense, I'm like, you know, if introduce a new generation of Ghostbusters and have it be endearing, the real Ghostbusters. <laughs> you know, then cool. You know, we we talked about like that possibility of like that. Um, Zool cult, like bringing her back. Yeah, like in a video game. Is that what they do? Yeah. Oh, um, whatever. Like shit, like that would be cool to me. But the fact that fucking Egon's not going to be in it, man, is a fucking bummer. Hopefully, he'll be a CGI ghost. It's yeah, dude, dude. That already hit me in my feels a little bit. <laughs> yeah. All right. I mean, Bill Murray's going to be in it. Correct. So I'm Correct. down. Yeah. Um, and I like the trailer, like the barn. And not just thrown out a window for fucking yucks. Right. But the, the barn and the whole bit with the vehicle, Ecto-1 in there and all that, like it's, it's, it's. In the music. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so a fantastic Easter egg or nah? In the Spider-Man Far From Home trailer, he's swinging in front of the Avengers Tower, Tony, you know, and it's like for sale or sold or something and a glass front is going up and there's a glass front of the Baxter building and people are internet people are hoping and f- crossing their fingers that perhaps this is the beginning of the inclusion of the fantastic four 
any thoughts, comments, courtesies, or concerns in regard to that? It's fine. Yeah. I don't really care. No. So uh, as of yet, so that deal it supposedly is going to be done as of March. Supposedly, do you think that they film stuff that they? Could possibly drop in that they're waiting on the, the ink to dry. I think it's definitely a possibility. Yeah. Like they film some stuff and maybe have Hugh because <clears throat> apparently Hugh Jack. I know it's not that's it's not Fantastic Four, but apparently Hugh Jackman's name is on some IMDb or something to do with in game. In game, that's awesome. But I mean, I wonder if they can show like a multiverse. Yeah, I mean they they I got as much as that Flash TV show is totally. I mean, it went from bad to worse. Yes, to dog shit. It's going to bad to train wreck, mm. and you just want to see the the damage. Mm. There's a there's a scene in there when he's like running in the speed force, and you see like Smallville. You see you see the old Flash. You see like you know Green Arrow. You know all that shit, and that's fucking. Every once in a while, that smack into like DC candy, like oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys had said something a while back about using the House of M. Storyline with with uh, oh yeah that, that, to, this is to that, explain yeah, the no more it, mutants yeah. Yeah. yeah that'd be tight yeah it would be and you could reboot everything and start all over again mm-hmm. with new actors and more Marvel it, it, or stuff. it could be that the, the House of M already happened oh right, yeah right, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah yeah and you wouldn't and need to reboot and this is a result of that right yeah um the, what I mean reboot is that you go back to their mutants are back into the Marvel <laughs> universe and or coming back yeah yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this was just interesting. Did you read this, uh, that James Wan worked with Snyder on? No, give me the, give me the lowdown. Pretty fucking awesome. So I'm going to read this verbatim as to not, uh, fuck anything up, but this is Wan talking and he said, we could have gotten a whole movie about Aquaman basically fawning over Mira the whole time and making all kinds of dirty jokes and things like that. And they really had to get away from that, which is all what Whedon had done. So Snyder had a little bit of an influence on Aquaman. Oh, this is somebody else. This isn't Juan. He said, James Wan was showing Zack Snyder against the studio's wishes, cuts of the movie and early test screenings and storyboards to make sure that they were on the same page with what he originally, excuse me, wanted, and Snyder gave his blessing and approval, bringing it back to what he wanted all along. Yep. I should have never taken that guy away, man. Nope. You should let him do his thing. You should let him do his thing. Taking the leash off that puppy. Yep. It had been, it had been perfect. <clears throat> it had been perfect. Yeah. Just let him ride the wave, you know what I mean? Now the now the DC universe smells like day old fish. <laughs> and beer, apparently. I mean fucking weed and they just put blood in the water. Yeah. Um <clears throat> the tastes like seaweed. <laughs> Dude, that's pretty fucking great. <laughs> um <laughs> <clears throat> so the the last thing we have is a question and I'll double check to make sure that we don't have any more but uh, I only see this one and it was uh, written on Patreon from uh, Oregon Jason uh, he said for a future episode can you guys talk about the secrets to your enduring friendship particularly you and Adam from children to adults and how you have stayed close for as long as you have I have a friend that I've known since I was 10 that I still talk to see anywhere from once to a week to once a month, but with who I have a hard time maintaining the same bond we had as children. Curious to hear how you guys have kept the love going so long. Oh. Yeah. Um, let me think. How do we keep the love going so long? <clears throat> I think that, uh, for one, that we have varied interests. Mm-hmm. But the thing that we were both commonly interested in that brought us t- together as friends has maintained. Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> we're still playing Sonic the Hedgehog. No, but uh, comics. Yeah. yeah you know, absolutely. like like the, the, the shared interest has always been there. But it is, I mean, it is like, I say this to people all the time, like it is, it is like family. Mm-hmm. Like you... You have times where you're, you're, you and your brother are fucking rolling together laughing and, you know, like, you know, and you have times where you're like, fuck, I have to do this because he's my family or he has to do this because he's, you know, like, yeah. and it's, it's, it's that it's, it's beyond, I think it's beyond friendship. That's what it is. It's no, I, I agree. 
And I mean, it's, you know, I think there's a lot of other common threads. We're both, um, we're both like entertainers in a way. You know what I mean? Um, we want to entertain our friends and family, you know, joke, funny mm-hmm. type of th- stuff. We're both kind of creative and artistic. We want to be constantly doing something. Mm. Um, we both have a good work ethic. We're not l- lazy mm-hmm. people. Um, I think, uh, so there's, there's, there's some shared qualities there. And then like the big thing too, is like, just like the shared history, that shared history is pretty strong. We come from, you know, very similar backgrounds with, you know, the growing up in the same area, Mm -hmm. exposed to the same things, right around the same age. Um, and then we stayed relatively close in, in proximity. I think, uh, I was, that uh, helps as well. When I read this, I was thinking about how nerve rage has kind of been, the biggest challenge that we've gone through in some time because I would agree to that prior to nerd rage, you know, if I was throwing a party, I invited you, if you had nothing going on, you'd hit me up and be like, Hey, you want to go? Or if you know, you're also like a big, uh, turn the mundane into an adventure. So mm-hmm. like, if you got to get your oil changed or something like, you know what I mean? And we'd get together for like these little random mm-hmm. things, but yeah. nerd rage is three hours once a week frequent. Yeah. Like we're spending over the past three years or two years, whatever this has been going on for us, we spent more time together consistently yep. than ever before since we were kids. So like that, that, that changes the dynamics of a relationship. It does. And, and shit comes from that. Yeah. But, um, it can be producing the pot. See, it's interesting. When we started doing this, we made a promise to one another. Do you remember that promise was? It wouldn't be work. It wouldn't be work. And we have lied to each other <laughs> about yeah. that about that promise. Um, and it's fine. And the other thing, too, is, like, as life changes. So, like, since this since we started Nerd Rage, you had another baby. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's that, that whole resetting of the family household. My kids have gotten to that more, just recently, independent phase, mm-hmm. where yours has gotten to that, I'm going to run around and get into shit phase. Mm-hmm. So that, that changes... Um, I've had, since we started Nerd Rage, one, two, three, four, five different work schedules. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's fucking nuts. Maybe six coming up here soon. Mm. Yours have been pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. What are the big life changes? A lot is going on where we do the the podcast. Mm -hmm. So we used to do it 50-50. We do it one day at my house, one day at your house. And that was working for a while, but then when we got all the equipment set up, it just makes more sense to come over here. Yeah, and there was um, there so was I one mean, of your it was one of your work schedules too that 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 changed it as well. Yeah, where it, we used actually we used to do it uh, on Skype. Yeah, and we used to do it. There was a period where we did it exclusively at your house. Uh, yes. there for a bit. Yeah. Um, so we used to do it on Skype, and you were actually against getting together and doing it live at first. At first, yep. Yeah, and it ended up. Listen, Adam, I know what I do. I've been doing this for Shattered Cast. Routine. It's a routine. I do. I don't do that. I have a tradition. That's what I have to do. I get my coffee. <laughs> um, and then, of course, adding the third and fourth, sometimes fifth chair mm-hmm. changes the dynamic of the show. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's been it's been good. I do, there's there's a time that we used to like get together and it's like, hey, let's go to fucking Cincinnati or let's go to fucking Pittsburgh and do conventions just to, just to both of us. Mm-hmm. And I do miss that. I think that that was like, uh, that that's something that I would like to do again. But unfortunately, I think we both have a nasty habit of making our hobbies our work business. And I also wonder if, you know, if, if that wasn't just a striking while the iron was hot. Do you know what I mean? Like if if we would still be able to do that with that kind of uh, randomness and... Oh, absolutely not. I mean, we did that. That was like for, f- I think, five years. Yeah, but I'm saying like now that we have kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. <clears throat> all that shit. I, I think I'm getting to the point where I might be able to get away with that. I don't, I think you're probably another year or two yeah. at the minimum. Like, hey, Laura, I'm Adam and I are going to go out for the whole weekend and go to Boston for a Comic-Con. See you later. Yeah, I'm yeah. not there. I'm not yeah, there. <laughs> and I also think, as well as there's a time and a place where our wives would not be interested at all mm-hmm. to do something like that, and now they would be. They would be. They, mm-hmm. they, 
not only is the community more inclusive to everyone, mm-hmm. I feel like it's it's blossomed where there's a, m- a multitude of things, more Correct. things to do. Correct. It's so, not just looking through long boxes. Yep. Or looking through fucking old toys. Yeah. You know, there's, you know, special special events and, you know. Kids games. corners. Kids, and, yeah, yeah. yeah. Art, artist alleys mm-hmm. have grown and, and blossomed, you know. Yeah. So, you know, for sure. And I sort of feel guilty that I don't take my kids to all the open night movies, you know, because they still haven't seen Ant Man and the Wasp, and they still haven't seen, mm-hmm. you know, Black Panther. They still haven't seen. Like, yeah, I didn't take them to see Black Panther. I took them to see Ant Man and the Wasp because Selena is like a massive Ant Man fan <laughs> because she likes ants. Um, Makes sense. I took them to see Infinity War because they were vested. But my general rule with that is, if they really give a fuck, I'll take them. But it's not going to be an adventure for the sake of being an adventure, you know, because like that's why we didn't go see Black Panther because they were like, let, let us go see Black Panther. And I was like, sure. Answer me three questions. What's his name? Where is he from? And I forget what the third one was. <laughs> and they couldn't tell me shit about him. I was like, oh, so you don't give a fuck. Yeah. You're not vested in this character. Yeah. You, have no idea. You, you just you just want a, a night out on the town. And that's cool. But your night out on the town isn't going to cost me 30 bucks. 30 bucks. You know what I mean? Deal. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, here's an interesting question. Do you think that if we changed, how far geographically do you think that we would have to be for it dramatically to affect our friendship? Hmm. <clears throat> dramatically affect? Uh, probably 45 minutes. You know, that, that doesn't necessarily, now, that doesn't mean, when you just to clarify, dramatically, it's just that it would dramatically change the dynamics of it, but it wouldn't, I don't think it I don't think it would be a, like, th- this would change, mm-hmm. this wouldn't. Okay. You know what I mean? I think for, and when I say this, I'm Thailand saying- Thailand too far. When I'm saying this, when I say this and this for the listeners, because Chris is always making me aware that I do that very often. Like, I'm like, look at look at the legs on this thing. And he's like, I have no fucking idea what you're talking about when I listen back to it. Um, this, that up, Chris. That's good to do, improving the show. Like. <laughs> this being uh, the podcast, the podcast would change, but the relationship between Adam and I wouldn't change over 45 minutes. I think that if, if, it, was, if it was anything that took away from the inability to see, like, to see each other on Christmas Eve mm-hmm. and like, the shit that really makes the, the family element, the family, Richard, mm-hmm. stand out, mm-hmm. I think that's what would change. So like, I think like, you know, Florida. You know, I think it's a different, it's a different ball game. Yeah, Chris, when you moved from Alabama, where I'm from, where you're yeah, from. you're from, mm-hmm. um, to Maryland, what, what? I mean, I know that you and your brother are close, right? Or no, you're not close. No, okay. Who are you? Clo- who are you close with in Alabama that night? Now, it's, have, you, have you experienced parents. that? My parents. Just your parents. That, that's it. Oh yeah, yes. Yeah, what you said. Wait, you did, this is your first Christmas. You didn't have it with your parents. But do you know where my parents are right now? Where are they? They're in Florida. <laughs> Oh, they moved from Alabama? No, they have an RV, and they're never home. Oh, okay. So that was one reason I was like, they're going to do this for the rest of their life. Yeah. That's the only thing that's keeping me here. That's why, you know, and I had such such good relationships up here. That's why I, I, I moved up here. You know, I, I don't, I, I, was, I was thinking about this. I don't talk to anybody I went to school with, was friends with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, I, my two closest friends, I, I had a falling out with one of them, and one, I think I mentioned, you know, I stopped calling him, mm-hmm. and yeah, I you guys, never heard another word. Yeah. It kind of broke my heart. Yeah. I think about it a lot. I don't thought about just hitting I, him up and be like, hey, dude. I do, I do. I will say this in that guy's, because I'm like you. I'm the caller. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, like, I have, like, a mental log in my head, and I go, all right, I have, all right so, so, have I talked to him? So, when's the last time I had him? Three weeks ago. Like, let me get, let me call up. And do that, you know, emotional deposit in, in the friendship bank account. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And some people like wait for your call. You know, and, and sometimes I wonder because I do get salty about it, like sometimes. But then, like, well, is this just the habit we've established? And like, you know, do I initiate the calls and you answer calls? We have our chats and whatnot. So there is one close friendship I have with somebody. It, it, it wasn't a guy that I went to high school with, but it, like, it was we worked together while I was in high school in different schools. And we were pretty close, did a lot of stuff together. Mar- he got married, I got married, the kids and everything. The interesting thing is his wife, and I'm not going to put all of his business out there, like his name and address and whatnot, <laughs> um, but his wife ended up having an affair on him. Hmm. And 
he like left her for a few weeks and she thought he was living with me when he went and moved with his parents. I like just didn't tell her. I like just, just left. I'm out. I'm out, bitch. And um, he was storing his motorcycle in my, in my garage. So one day he just showed up out of blues like, hey, man, I need to pick up my bike. Like somebody dropped him. I was like, yeah, man, it's, it's your bike, man. I'm like, that's, that's fine. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, listen, me and you know Judy... Um, Judy. I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking about leaving her. I caught her cheating on me, and this is something like there have been suspicions. Like mm. before he got married, I'm like, <clears throat> you should not marry this woman. I, listen, bro, you let me know right now, and I'll fucking drive you away. And I was his best man. And um, but after he ended up going back to her, because he, one thing's like, listen, she's a good mother, you know, and they like they're basically roommates now. Like there's no affection, there's no nothing, but. For years, he didn't talk to me anymore because of the embarrass the embarrassment or whatever the disconnect. Like, dude, you were part of that life when I was married to her, and now I'm just kind of, you know, roommates with her, and you can't be part of that life anymore. Like, they, wow. we all get together, you know. I just want to be reminded of it. Exactly. Wow. Now, years later, and this happened like ten years ago. A like, years later, um, we started hanging out again. Like, I think we've hung out two or three times. And and now he's like, oh man, bring Pam and the, the kids over and whatnot. I'm like, uh, really? Now 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 I feel fucking uncomfortable. Uh-huh. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like you know, she knows that I know. You know what I mean? And I'm I'm like, hey, can you pass the cheaters? I mean Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want to say some shit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and um, and, and, and it sucks too, man. Because like I, I love this dude. He's good people, man. He didn't fucking deserve this. You know what I mean? Um, so, and I like, dude, everybody's got their own, I mean, like, you know, I'm not, I'm not in their relationships, not, so I got compassion for her too. I mean, who knows what was going on with them, you know what I mean? I oh, fucking, sure. I Absolutely. don't fucking know. You're getting, you know you're getting one side of the story. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I probably know, I probably know what's going on a little bit more than I should, but, you know, regardless, it, you know, people grow, people change, people are fucking idiots, you know what I mean? They make mistakes, they gotta live with the consequences of mistakes. But, like, that is the, the one, and he did end up moving. Like down to like the eastern shore or something, so it was a couple hour clip, and that was another factor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but like I do miss, I do miss that relationship. Yeah, you dude. Know? Uh, there's um, like the only people that I really keep in contact with from like long term is like you, shoulders, um, Shane. I, I still talk to fairly regularly. Yeah, and um, Jr. Mm-hmm. But even Jr. Like I mean, we talk, but like. Ever since this, yeah, it's not. This isn't his cup of tea. He's fallen way back, yeah. Because yeah. <clears throat> for him, I think, and we've never had this conversation, um, but I think like he came to Skullfest the first year, and which was like only like twenty people, if that. I think, uh, but I could, I could see it, and I've known him for a very long time. He kind of had this like, not his vibe. I don't know these people, yeah. and I'm not sure if these people know you. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, it's fair. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. Mm-hmm. I get it. Uh, so I don't, I, I don't make any kind of, mm-hmm. you know, business about it. But uh, I'd had that conversation with him if he ever wanted to. But uh, I still stay in touch with him. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I feel like there's a person I'm forgetting, and I feel bad about it. You shoulders. Oh, Dante. Mm-hmm. Um. Everybody, I mean, Dante still in the mix pretty well. Yeah. Now I know I could hit up uh, Gary. No, not that Gary. Couldn't couldn't hit up that Gary. <laughs> um, Dude, you should hit up that Gary. If I had a way to contact him, I'd contact him. He owes me like forty bucks. I'm sure. He, I'm sure he's good for it now. Oh yeah, one time, one thousand percent. <laughs> sure, he's good for it now. Uh, I put up. I put up fucking a couple hundred bucks to save his ass. He yeah. was in trouble. He was in a pickle. Yeah. Um, but like, I think if I hit dot up now. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I need help. He'd be there. Really? Mm-hmm. He'd be there. When's the last time you talked to him? When he came last up that last year? What's he? Uh, out? Not last year, 2017. Yeah. Um, and it was just he came by. He came to something. Yeah, it was like a kid's birthday party, maybe or, or something, like a Father's Day cookout or yeah, something. Yeah, he like came that. to something. Yeah, right? yeah, like, yeah. Because yeah. he, he put on a bunch of weight. It was odd. <laughs> he wasn't a dot anymore. It was not. He a was dot. a big old circle. <laughs> <laughs> and like, um, the, but yeah, because j- just because we, like, Tobias is another one. Like, I, I hit up, yeah, to, yeah, I hit yeah. up Tobias not too long ago. Mm-hmm. We picked right up. Mm-hmm. No, I hadn't spoken in years. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but it's uh it's the dynamics like that the dynamics of that relationship have changed where there's no expectations but the the love is there mm-hmm. Um, and I think if I hit dot up and I was like, look, man, I'm in a pickle. I need you to pick me up at the corner of such and such and such and such. My car broke down. I need help. Test him. He'd be there. <laughs> He'd be there. But, uh, but you know, he, he had a, he got married last year. Didn't invite me to his wedding. You know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. And he was, uh, he was a groomsman at my wedding. Uh, yeah. you know, I say I risked my life for his in real life. Um, but you know, I talked to Tobias about that and he was like, dude, he was like, I wasn't even supposed to be in it. Uh, but I ended up like hitting him up like a week before, and they they just went down to the courthouse, had like a little small party at his house, yeah, had, yeah. you know. So like I get it, but like you know, just send me a card, like just you know what I mean. Like I like I send him, I still I send him a Christmas card and everything, like every year, just like you know, hey, I'm thinking of you, yeah, like, you know. I wonder if, and th- <clears throat> this is me shooting in the dark. I don't know Dot that well. He mm-hmm. didn't talk much. Yeah, <laughs> they, yeah, he's a um, man. A few words. He is. A, those few and those words didn't come. Mm-mm. Um, but I wonder like all that legal shit that happened back in the day and he's one of those guys that was, you know, got professional, started doing his thing. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if all that stuff is kind of an embarrassment to him now in that Mm -hmm. he doesn't want to, like, he doesn't want to associate with anything of the, like, I could see something like that happening. I mean, I could see how it could be a painful memory. Yeah. Like, 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 dude, that was the worst time of my life. And that wasn't who I was, and that's not who I am now. And I, I don't want to look back and be reminded of that shit. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm, that definitely was who he was. I'm, yeah, <laughs> yeah but, maybe. <laughs> yeah, but people, you know, people change. I people mean, change. And people I, fucking. He, I mean, I, I needed to change. He needed to change. Yeah, like, we're both in better places um, as a result of it. But I mean, I remember being at uh, the Village Center, and there was a guy who, the last time we spoke, there was an issue. And it was a significant issue. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden he hit me up out of the blue and was like, Hey, I'm in, I'm in town. Meet me at the village center. And I walked across the street and met him and I had dot with me and he got out, the dude got out of his car and came and was like, Hey man, just good to see you. Like, you know, like, and I was like, all right, you know, he was like, Oh, I'm not worried about that old shit. Let that shit, you know, it was Anthony Adams. You Mm -hmm. know, he was like, he was like, let that, let that be in the past or whatever. But then I could hear, (laughs) <laughs> mm. you know that was in Dots you know like that's just who he was like <clears throat> he wasn't going to be embarrassed or allow anybody that was with him to be embarrassed wow um, but now he's like an IT guy and he's just and he's got like you know he's always been a worker like he's always like had like three or four jobs and you know he was paying his mom's rent at like 16 mm. and uh, but you know we, we when you go through f- fire with someone you you, you, could, you there's always this connection it's just I, I hate how far we drifted apart, but he also lives you know about an hour away. Mm-hmm. You know that, and it's just an hour. But that I mean, so, I mean we live fifteen minutes away from one another, and sometimes that fifteen minutes feels like Ugh, I gotta, fuck. I gotta go all the way over. You know what I mean? It's an hour. Yeah, he's gonna drive yeah. to our house twice two times a year. It's a little, right. Little, right. right, challenging. <laughs> I, would, I mean, I would I would come I would come more often. I would come over more often for shit. I mean, I I would. I, would you? Yeah. Would you? Yeah. Yeah. I would. I I think. I think most things that uh, so I'll never hit anybody up and say, "Hey, can I come over?" Like I'll never do that. That's just that's not. I mean, who does that? Um, I mean, Joe does that. I mean, in a way, like you know, be like, "Hey, you got anything going on today?" Like I already know what that means. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, like you know, and I, I'm the type of, like I wish you guys just just move in, just live, just live. In, you know what I mean? Like I, I just like the company. You know. <laughs> um, so it's it's never an inconvenience on my side, but I, I would never. It's, I mean, I feel guilty hitting people up to say you want to come over, you know. Like I'm like fuck, like I'm I'm always asking them to come over. Or, you know, it's, it's guilty. It's yeah, it's a guilty. It's it's like it's like that phone call thing, right? Um, you know, if I if if you stop making the phone calls, who calls you back? And it's like, you know, sometimes I'm like, man, like, at what point internally does someone say, man, I'm always having to come over to his house? Or whatever, you know what I mean? But it's it's not really me thinking that as much as like I'm just trying to get together. June sixth, two thousand and seven. I'm just oh, <laughs> I'm like I'm like man, because I know how you I know how you zero in. On I'm like fuck, oh, what did I do? I'm so I got I want to I want to continue this, but go in a different realm. 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 Um, do you find now at work mm-hmm. you have like your work buddies, your work friends? Mm-hmm. But and like I know you got a couple guys that you you text back and forth and whatnot, but you don't really hang out with them outside of work. Mm-hmm. You kind of keep the guys going for the next work. 
Yeah. Isn't that kind of funny? Like that, that happens <clears throat> at a point. There's a certain point where you hang out with the people you work at. They, they become like your, your friends, yeah. right? And I think we've all, and I don't know about you, Chris, but I would assume that there was a point in time where you used to hang out with some guys you used to work with when you were in Alabama. <laughs> where right? from? The, the, where I you will from? tell you, the, the people I converse with ever outside of the circle of the collector the, the, community. The realm. The realm of the cool table, we'll say, are people that either I currently work with or I have worked with in the past. And that's, I don't talk to anybody outside of like anybody. Not friends else. with your neighbors. You know, I know their I know their names. Yeah. See, at my mopping gig, like, there's only like three people I ever really got together with, like Charlie, Jimmy, and Gary. You know, now, like, yeah. Now, yeah. the last couple jobs I've had are, you know, I the closest person that works with me is is four hours away. Okay. So, so that's significant. Yeah. So it isn't like, hey, you want to come over? But like, if we're we're you know working on a project, you know, we go out to dinner and drink beer or whatever, but. It's not like, you know, you want to come over for a barbecue. Yeah, I, I, I remember, like, now I try to keep my personal life at home and my professional life at work. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and I'll say another, another thing. The, the roles I, I had when I was working, you know, daily with people, I was their supervisor. I was the, the well, high, that changes the I was dynamics. the highest rank yeah. you could be in the building. So, yeah. you know, yeah, okay, you want to go grab a beer after work, that's fine. I'm not going to have 12 motherfuckers come to my house. Yeah, because yeah, then yeah. I've got a whole other level of, of yes. shit I could yeah. be held accountable. For. Yeah, like you can't be, you can't ever really be one of the guys. And that is something yep. I, I I would talk to, and I was friends with you know my peer my peer group, the other mm-hmm. other managers, and we would have those conversations. Yep, it's you know, it's kind of lonely if you don't you know because the I, day the day I got notified that I was going to get promoted and I was going to be a supervisor, but before it actually happened. Like a dude that I knew since high school, that we were cool, and you know we were we we were cool in high school. We worked together at a restaurant. We were both waiters there. We went to college together. Uh, I helped his dad helped me get a job where we, we were working before, and then I left there, and then I helped him get a job where I was working. Um, you know, he lived like five minutes down the road from me. Um, that that day. He started treating me different, mm-hmm. like and like we had that. I was like, "Come on, let's go do this." Like, I can't do that with you now. I'm like, what? He's like, you're gonna be like the boss. Dude. I can't do that with you now. Like, it can't go fuck around. You know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> dude, we fucked around <clears throat> all the time. And like, you know, go, you know, go sit in the break room and watch some fucking TV. Mm-hmm. You know, fucking watch the Return of the Joker. Like, mm-hmm. that's literally some shit that we did. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, do you want to watch Return of the Joker? Fucking, let's go watch Return of the Joker. And he's like, I can't do that with you. I'm like, oh, what the fuck, man? And it did. It did start now. There was a new group of like supervisors that I would kind of hang out with. But then like you force it, and you're like, I don't like you. You're a fucking douchebag. Yeah. yeah no wonder you you're a supervisor. But, <laughs> that, but, but that goes back to to you know Bobby's point from earlier about kayaking. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. These are the you know. Look, I'm not big into sports, so yeah. all these guys. Oh, did you see the game last? I had a conver- a conversation with somebody from work that was. Oh, could you believe they blew that call the other night? Oh yeah, and luckily, yeah. luckily, I had seen somebody on on Facebook bitching about it. So I'm like, yeah, man, that was all. I really had no idea, <laughs> but I just bullshitted it because I didn't want to be like, sorry, man, I don't really. Because it's actually the guy who he didn't he didn't get me my job, but he told me about this job because I worked with him. Uh-huh. He was actually my <clears throat> supervisor two jobs ago. So it's crazy. I I like sometimes at work I purposely am more <clears throat> pedantic and you know like. Well, you know, the square root of, you uh-huh. know, 81, is, you know, whatever, just to push people off. Like, so I, I don't have to fucking talk to you about that. Mm. Like, oh, man, you watch football. Actually, you know, since Michael Vick came back to the NFL, I don't watch football anymore. I can't, you know, after this guy went to, you know, see, I'm, I'm a dog guy after seeing what he did to the dogs. He picked him up by the back lanes and slamming his walls and fucking shocking them to death and drowning him and everything. If then allowed him to come back and play professional football and make millions of dollars and be a, a fucking role model, I can't endorse that, so I'm out. It's not a racial or political thing. Right, right, right. It's, it's right, a straight right. up ethical thing. And they're like, and he, you know, he's a phenomenal athlete when he's playing for the Falcons and the guy had machine parts on the inside. He's amazing. But I, you know, when Philly took him back, I'm out and NFC was my conference and I can't deal with it anymore. They go, Oh, I'm my bad man. They don't bring it up with me anymore. You know, like I, I had um, one experience where I hung out. I mean, I, I've hung out with this particular supervisor and I think the world of him, like yeah. he's really like a father to me in a lot of ways. Um, <clears throat> but we went, we got together one day early on, and this guy was like, 
he was going to make sure I was going to be the mopper of all moppers. And he quizzed me about every stick, mop head, every, that you could bucket that you could possibly imagine. The ring, what, the ringer. Yep. Yeah, the ringer. <clears throat> you have Bucket's the difference between the plastics sin- and the metals. Synthetic versus natural mm-hmm. fibers on yeah. the mop. And we got together outside of work one time, and the 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 older guy that was not a supervisor, he was like, "Oh my God, you're going to hang out with him." And I was like, yeah. And he was like, he's going to quiz you all day. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, you're right. And he was like, look, the first time he starts in with that shit, you look him in his eye and you say, look, we're not at work right now. You're not my boss. You keep it up. You ain't going to be my friend. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> he didn't do that. No, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean it's it's hard. If you, so did he quiz you the whole night? Oh my god! Oh, I mean he still quizzes me today. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's tough from that you know work friend standpoint to go out after work for a beer and not talk about work because mm-hmm. that's all, a lot of the times I get yeah. Comment. Whenever I'm around my work buddies, we always talk or, about or work. you bitch about somebody or or there's an adventure you relive an event, but yeah, it's always something yeah. connected to what you do for a living. So I had I had one incident it was like the reverse. So a guy that was like two levels above me, like. He would hang out. He like come over. Him and his wife would come over. And like you know, I, used to, I had like a nice backyard in my last house, and I would have lots of parties there. And like, and some more people would come. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was like it was usually for like work functions. I would host because I very I was very close. And like he came a couple times. Then something happened, man. I don't know what it was. Um, I think like his boss, like you know, you can't hang out with him anymore. You can't do that. You can't mm-hmm. be fraternizing. He, and he, it stopped. But we we were. We were okay. We got we got we get along to this day, but I never see the guy anymore. Hmm. Shame, but yeah, but it's interesting, dude. That guy, fucking high school sweetheart, married to his wife, had a kid, everything, everything's going fine. He's like he he's getting ready to retire and everything. His wife comes home one day, he's like, "Listen, I want a divorce. I don't love you anymore," and just rolls. And how old <clears> are these <throat> people at this point? In their fifties? Yeah, we'll say that. Just rolls. Just like I'm out. That no. falling out of love shit is scary, man. Yeah, I, I, he's in his late forties, but like yeah, he started working early, you know, mm-hmm. and um, and uh, he uh, just she left in the house, didn't want his retirement, nothing, just rolled I'm out. Yeah. Selling some some Thelma and Louise shit, huh? I don't know. I guess so, man. Wow, we can wrap this up. Yeah, um, yeah. Shout out to the rest of the Nerve Age team. W- wasn't there some uh, Star Wars stuff though? Uh, it wasn't. Bullshit. Yeah. It's bullshit. No, it was stuff we've already talked about, okay. like the swamp planet, the Keep planet. up, Phil. <laughs> no, no. God damn it. It's, it's, <laughs> I, I need to get on my Reddit shit, man. I need to get back on my Reddit search. I mean, the whole script's out right now, right? <laughs> Probably. That sounds Just like a line up. from a song. <laughs> I got to get back on my Reddit shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, shout out to the Phils, whether they be Maryland or black. Shout out to Raul on Instagram, Dante the Destroyer, and Manny. Shout out to Joe KW. We couldn't be here today. Maybe next week we can all get together. Finally. What day are we doing next week? Thursday is what? No. Yeah, it was Thursday. Can't do it. <laughs> Fuck. And um, shout out to the cool table. Shatter cast uncut. Enter the realm. Beer and Bolters 40K. 30K. 30K, sorry. Plastic Fanatics. Stasis Lock. Toy Detox. Uh, building up to a break in the mold. Fresh Communications. And Verbally Challenged. Which, by the way, Bobby won't brag on himself, but he did an episode of... Uh, Verbally challenged, and it is phenomenal. It was good. Oh, yes, good. I listened to the whole thing. Good, great. Good, good. I wanted to talk to you about that. Yeah. Maybe next episode. <laughs> write it down as an alibi. Um, yeah, no, I, I, uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. He's got a, he's got a talent for presenting an open venue where you feel comfortable talking. Like, I, you know, it's, it's a skill. So, good on him for that. And with that said, have a lovely evening. You're off the greatest thing this year. I know it's because you've been I not watching somebody, pornography. Maybe. I, I need something new. Okay. I need something new. All right. Well, that's the, the lovely evening is not it. I know. <laughs> Maybe it is for now. It's got to be something vaguely derogatory. I like those tan lines. Tasty taint. <laughs> Tight dick player. <laughs>